Welcome to Wild Eric's Traveling Podcast. Today we have Rebecca Smith of North Carolina. She's a firefighter. So, what should we call you, Rebecca? A firewoman, a firefighter, a hero, a heroine, a Republican? <laughs> um, Rebecca, you, knew, you knew that question was I, coming, so I don't know I why did. you're laughing. It still is funny. I chuckled when I read it. Uh, right. It's easy to make uh, you laugh. All right. <laughs> Rebecca works. You can call me Rebecca. Yeah, but like if you know if a child is burning in a building and they have to know what to scream out after Call they listen the fire to this, they're, are they going to say "Firewoman, help me! I'm in this burning building"? What, what should they? What would they call you? Uh, a lot of people are now saying "firefighter," mm. um, and I'm not saying I'm a hero, but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, um, that's that's why you get paid. But some people say "fireman," and I am not offended at that. Um, and some people say fire woman, which is also correct. Uh, my husband, before we got married, used to joke that he was dating a fireman. So that was hilarious. <laughs> is, he, is he dating a fireman? He was. Oh, okay. Well, it's okay. <laughs> it was, surprise, it's me. So that, that's the actual term. So people know that out there you can use firefighter. Is it okay to say fire woman, though? Absolutely. Okay. That is also correct. Firefighter, firewoman, fireman. What? Yeah. Let me ask you this. What made you hate fire so much? <laughs> that I wanted to fight it so hard. Right, that you wanted to <laughs> attack it. So, uh, What's your inspiration? Uh, what inspired you to become a firewoman? Well, you know me from way back when. When I was at the college. and We go way back to like, DCCC in Lexington, is it? North Carolina? Yeah, it's no longer DCCC anymore. What is it now? DDCC. DDCC, okay. Uh, anyway, um, Double yeah. DCC? Double D, double C. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, so, higher education is something. Um, but I, I was working full-time and below the poverty line. So oh. I was very, very poor. Okay, so you're working for the college, yeah. you're getting your paychecks, and you go home, paychecks and you, you look funny. in your fridge, and you're like, <laughs> people not, we shouldn't live this way. Nope. I can't afford kombucha, I can't afford wine, I can't afford nuts and bolts and mm-hmm. all of, and you said, hey, I'm not going to take this anymore, okay. Well, uh, it just wasn't right for me either, like I didn't, mm. and it got to the point where it was not enjoyable, so I left and coached CrossFit for a number of years, which were right. the I, happiest yeah. years of my life, I, I love that. coaching CrossFit, it was amazing, we opened a gym in Lexington, and um, the guys who opened it reached out to me, I think I was the only certified uh, CrossFit instructor in the county at the time. So let's back up one second, so you and I, we met in the gym at DCCC. Yeah. And I'm trying to think. You said you were, so you, you had the background in weightlifting, and that tied into the firefighting. I think I'm losing my train of thought because I've never done this before. I'm a, I'm finna to answer your I'll let you. I'll let you continue. Okay. I got you. So um, coaching CrossFit for a number of years was awesome, but also... Uh, you don't make a lot of money doing that either. Right, right, right. But I was happy, and that was what's most important to me. However, you know, I need to pay the bills and things. So there were just some some guys at the gym who were firefighters, and I just was. Mm, I just okay. looked at him one day. I was like, "Well, what if I became a firefighter?" I didn't. I don't know. It just came out of my mouth. Okay, and, see, I'm seeing how it led there. I don't know, I'm just trying to get this in my brain. Okay, so mm-hmm. from the from the gym at the college, mm-hmm. then you started coaching CrossFit, Mm -hmm. which led to you meeting firefighters, and that opened the the door. Okay. Sure. Well, I just said it. I just said it out loud, and it just, wherever it came from, it just came out of my mouth, and they were all like, "Um, yes, and they were emphatic. And so I thought, oh, yeah, I can do that, and I should. And it fits me so well. It suits me. It suits my personality and my lifestyle and everything I just I don't know how or why I didn't find it sooner, but right. I'm grateful that I have I have it now. Well, maybe you didn't find it until now because now it was the right time in, yeah, God, in sure. God's plan, you know. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, <laughs> I agree. Um, you know, like our scriptures say, you know, uh, in Psalms 
it's like you are light to my path and a lamp into my feet and I believe that you know so I can take every step with confidence um that he is a light to my path and a lamp unto my feet and I yeah I mean he just led me in that direction throughout so I can look back and see him moving me around and pointing me in different directions and I'm grateful for all of it amen Mm -hmm. I was just thinking while you were saying that not only is God guiding your steps and everything but God is like something you need when you're going into a fire situation yeah it's uh so like some of the things i've seen i'm just like how can you not believe in god oh my goodness you've seen (laughs) we're gonna get into that uh i have that as one of the questions like if you've seen any miracles but could i ask you can we um could i ask you about the training right quick before we get into that okay uh my question here was tell us about fire axe training what about hose training all training um just you know we axe is one of our tools and the halligan is probably the most prevalent tool that we use hold on hold on i don't think people know that word i've heard of a cardigan what's a halligan halligan has forks on one side and adds and a and like a pipe like a is it it's like is it like an axe no but the axe fits in it so it's our tools that we use to force a door open so there's you know you're saying the axe fits in it do they you like click them together? I mean, I understand. Kind kind of. I mean, the mm-hmm. the axe head fits in the forks on mm-hmm. the one side, and the handle of the axe fits into the ads and the um, the spike on the other side. Yeah, it's used to pry open doors. Yeah, we and use it for forcible. Entry. What was it called again? Hardigan. It's a Halligan. <laughs> Hardigan's a character from Sin City. I'm sorry. So. <laughs> Uh, so, ha- Halligan. Okay. Yeah. Training in the academy is one of the most difficult things I've ever done. And I say one of the most difficult things because I've done mm. some stuff in my life. It was very difficult. Well, yeah, I've heard that the fire department so, training is very uh, challenging. Well, our department is particularly difficult. So, Why would your department be more difficult than the next? Um, that the people that work there are just, uh, I think the training staff, uh, yeah, they, you know, there was, there, I don't know the history fully cause I'm still fairly new, right? but uh, I think there, they had some need to really step up their game and the training staff came in. There was like a, maybe a change of guard or something. The training staff came in and they were excellent and they did things with excellence and they, made it more difficult because part of that is like weeding out you know people that it might not be a good fit for them Um, well not only that if you hire somebody who's not capable of doing the job they might get somebody else killed right right so um yes in our class there was one guy who was like this this is an odd bird i don't know how i would feel riding on a truck with him like he was just he was an odd bird and um I was like, well, maybe we'll fill this one out because it was. I mean, he he left the uh, academy class pretty early on, um, but you know, like it is not a old man's game, is what our captains, our training captains, told us. Well, it's, what are the the age cutoffs? There's no age cutoff, but you it's just, if you're not if you're no longer like you know a, you have to be physically able, right. you have to be mentally capable. As soon so as you lose that, people. Um, can sometimes with age become more claustrophobic if they already are. They can become more fearful of heights, especially if they already are, or just develop those fears as you go along. So like Sylvester Stallone, we all know he's in great shape. He could still be a fireman. Whereas someone like Jack Nicholson, who is like a bloated starfish. Oh, Jack Nicholson. <laughs> I, I love Jack Nicholson, but I'm saying he couldn't be a fireman. I don't. Maybe you could use him as, as like his voice, like I, think I used- want these hoses to be in order right now. Wasn't he on The Shining, Jack Nicholson? Yeah. So he was a firefighter. He was, and the thing. So funny story. Uh, Jack Nicholson was a firefighter in real life. Yeah. So when in The Shining, when he cuts through the door with the axe, he was actually a firefighter originally. So he busts through that door. They went through so many prop doors because he. Well, you're saying before Jack Nicholson was an actor, he was a firefighter. Yes, and so they had to get an actual you wood see door. You these fires here? They're really starting to get on my nerves. Get those hoses <laughs> out of my face. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Here goes the wild air part. Oh. What would you expect? <laughs> I know. It's 
No, nothing. So it would be totally calm and <laughs> during this interview, no. Okay, uh, getting back to the training. Okay. I mean, I I love to keep talking back to Jack Nicholson. So we. But that's in Stallone. So I was trying to make the point that, you know, somebody like Stallone is still keeping themselves up in their older age, whereas Nicholson's actually a little older, but he's bloated. He just keeps drinking beers and eating sandwiches all day. And therefore, he can't fight fires. And that's my point. Okay. <laughs> Good point. Noted. Thanks. You'd be surprised some of the... Some folks I see, I'm like, wow, that's a big dude. But they move, man. Some of them can move. Um, Is there a lot of other women firefighting along your side? Mm, so, it is a male-dominated dominated, mm, um, yeah. career, for sure. But there are more women in my department per capita than I think pretty much any other department in North Carolina. I, th- I, th- I don't know that for a fact. So I don't know actual hard numbers of everybody's department. I want but, to tell you... St- but we are pretty progressive in our department. I want to tell I you like. a story yeah. about firefighting. And I want you to tell me uh, details uh, from your end. One night, I was having a panic attack and I called 911. And the fire department showed up. And the fire department showed up. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, I, uh, I don't want you to think I'm crazy, but I think God was talking to me tonight. And they gave me some really strange looks, and they just kind of calmed me down. <laughs> yeah, and, like, then, and then left. But my point yeah, is, like, yeah. the fire department is often dispatched for not just fires. In that, my situation, there was the fire in my brain. Right. But Medical calls. How does that correlate to the training? Because you get you get the fire train, the swing and the axe, the hoses. Mm-hmm. What kind of training do you have for like psychological matters where you're dealing with somebody who's losing their mind or or what was it like an e, you're cross trained in EMT? Yeah, so everyone in our department um, is an EMT, okay. and we got that training. If we didn't already have that certification, we. Um, we got that certification through training after the fire training. We went straight into EMT, and so we're all certified EMTs. And we would go on that call, and it might come in as a difficulty breathing. It could come in as whatever you called it to be. Fire in or, my brain. I don't know what you told the dispatcher, but whatever that I is. I told them I had a fire in my brain. Okay. <laughs> Send the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> Send someone to talk to me about God. So uh, we would go, yeah, on the now on all the medical. This is coming to my mind now. Mm-hmm. Do you have training in which they bring you to a field with a giant, like, concrete warehouse or something that they've set on fire themselves and said, "Okay, like, go train in this mock building that we've set on fire." So we have simulation. Uh, yeah, we have uh, live burns that we can do periodically. So someone might donate their house. Uh, to be burned? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because if they're going to rebuild or something. You guys want to burn something? I got a whole barn out back. Yeah. And if it's deemed safe enough, um, we'll use it for training and we'll do live burns. So we'll light it up. We'll go inside. We'll feel the heat a little bit. We'll talk about how the fire builds, um, where to, you know, with the water finding the seat of the fire is what we call it and and you're also training in methods to put out fires right yeah yeah, yeah because exactly an electric fire can only put out be put out how um so if you are in a household that has that is on fire due to electrical issues i mean you use water however in our walk around before we start um flowing water where you know people are pulling the hose out and flaking it and the the engineer is starting the water pumping it through the hose so it's filling up and there is a captain who's doing a walk around and he turns off the gas he turns off the electric um you know meter and stuff so he just he kind of controls those before we start our fire attack and then we start flowing water um copious amounts of water will put out just about anything i saw steven seagal in this movie he used dynamite to put out a giant fighter fire and i asked my father daddy how did steven seagal do this and uh he said yeah, daddy i was a young kid back then <laughs> okay and he said to me son i think what steven seagal did is he created an explosion and it like when you blow out a candle okay it blew 
the, the explosion blew out the cake candle. So maybe it saturated it in, in yeah, oxygen. Have you ever blown or... a fire out with a bomb, Rebecca? Unfortunately, I'm not that rad. Uh, <laughs> But that is pretty rad. Well, when you get to Steven Seagal's level, you let me know. Give me a call. We'll call have a drink. <laughs> For sure. Okay, I want to make sure we've really plumbed the uh, the question here, mm -hmm. which was about the training. Is there anything else you want to add? Any more juices you want to give the audience about the training of being a firewoman? Um, I mean, this is really difficult, physically demanding, mentally demanding. I will say that... There was some dude at the church I went to who was like, as long as they don't change the um, requirements, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I was because like, I'm a woman. <laughs> oh, okay, right. They, they didn't want to lower the standard? <laughs> right. I was like, of course not. Well, thank you that yeah. you approve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I got it. Thank right, you. Right, because he was like, well, if you make it easier for women, then you're not upholding the same standard of safety or something. Or, right, you know. so, and I fully, I full, I fully agree with that, full you on. Fully understand. Fully on, fully, full for agree. For sure, for sure. I agree with that, 100%, because you shouldn't change the standards. I mean, as much as I agree with it, I was like, why would you say that to me? And of course, and I'm going to be strong enough. This was enough. a man at church? Yeah. Well, it's surprising what people say will say at church. I mean, like, some people really? feel very bold to say things. <laughs> Just I like, went to a church what? once, and this guy said to me, I see a Sony Ericsson <laughs> phone <laughs> we were, floating over your head. That's what we were And doing. that was his prophecy to me. I said, uh, <laughs> thanks. He said, what's your name, son? And I said, Eric. He's like, praise God. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and... Uh, he asked your name before we went in. Oh, okay. That's, then, that's where you got it. And then he said it again during Listen, the service. Let me tell you, I believe. That's funny. I believe in church prophets. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually talked to one recently, probably about a year ago or two, and he said you're going to be doing something big in the in the form of media, and the people who are going to be helping you will be in your life soon, and. Uh, I gotta say, I don't know if it's because I heard that from him. I was planning on doing this anyway, I guess, so it's, uh, it's kind of happening. All right, enough about Wild Eric. Uh, <laughs> okay, training. I'm gonna think, okay, you think about anything that's happening in the training that you might want to mention. I'm gonna think of anything that I, you may have missed. Let's take that, like, 10 seconds to do that. Okay. I carried the Time. heaviest dude. Types of fires. So, yeah. Down um, a ladder. The heaviest dude in our class. He was a big dude. So I carried him down a ladder. Part of the training, you had to carry uh, a giant, a, a Nephilim on your back. He was a Nephilim. And it wasn't on my back, but yes. <laughs> and how many pounds was this guy? I don't know how much he weighs. He's, he was six something, six five maybe. He and big. Like, not overweight, but like thick, full. And uh, maybe... Two hundo, or something, or more. Probably like two twenty, maybe two thirty, something like that. So I want to know about hose training, um, because what's it like to hold a hose that shoots so out? Fascinating. Oh, what's the PS? What's what's the proper terminology? How much how much power is coming out of that hose? Okay, so could you rip the, the skin off someone's body or the paint off a wall? Mm. Maybe like, at close you, range. You know, I mean, are, it would hurt somebody. People for sure. aren't spanking their children anymore. What if we hose them down at like level four? That would be worse. Level four. It's like you know what? <laughs> what you stole four? the cookie. I don't know You're what level get, four is. Uh, you but you, you want a bad. level four on the hose, Jack? Uh, son, Junior? Because <laughs> we will put the level hose four on. Not here. level four. I don't know what level Not four is. Not level four, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> We're here in the south. So that's what they sound like. Um. Right? The um <laughs> So tell me about hose training. Like, is there hose targets? Like, you got to hit this bird up here. <laughs> the target is the fire. Um, that's kind the, of the it. The fire moves. So when we flow water on fire, we move it in um, either an O or an 8 or S pattern. Wasn't so, it true you're supposed to hit the base of the fire? So you don't want to hit the seat of the fire necessarily because sometimes what happens is is the fire just moves up where it mm. can feed on the oxygen and the um, the fuel feeding it above. So then you just burn your heads off. So you want to hit from the ceiling down, work your way down to um, the seat of the fire when you're in like a burning structure. 
What do you think of the Elvis Presley song, A Hunk of Burning Love? Man, Elvis is like, the do, king. <laughs> do, do fire songs have more of a meaning to you now? Like that song by the cult, Fire Woman? And they're like, fire! Fire! Like when you're going down the street now and you know mm-hmm. your job as a firefighter and you hear a fire song, like, you know, Kiss, get the firehouse or whatever. Do you, on, do, you feel, do you feel a sense of warmth? Uh, let's see. I don't know that song's really... It's okay. Best, you know, but what does happen is, is I think about, like, jokes, um, because we wear duty pants okay. to do, work. Do you have any firefighter jokes? That and there's nice. so many. Like, Tell me one. Oh, in the academy, there are just a lot of missed opportunities, because we wear duty pants. Oh, no. Yes. You wear duty it's the pants. worst. Are you We're the worst. So firefighters are really funny. I love my crew. Wait, you're trying to tell me there's an item of clothing as a firefighter. They're called duty pants. Duty pants. Oh my god. I was like, come on, this is this is too easy. You should go up to like every when I meet firefighters now. I'm gonna go like, hey, do uh, you have to wear duty pants? Yes. That's great. Oh, so my crew is really awesome. It's like hanging out because I have a big brother. And it's kind of like hanging out with my big brother all day long. Um, and periodically we get to go do really fun things or go on a call and, you know, do work. But, um, yeah, it's it's like the brotherhood. Do you get to jump on the back of the fire truck and ride? Like, no, like we don't gr- do it anymore. They don't have those trucks anymore. Why? Me, uh, safety, OSHA, NFPA safety. standards. You're risking yeah. your life as a firefighter. I mean, it, that's not safe. <laughs> you know, worried about you falling off the back? There is an element of danger in our job. However, we we train very hard for the worst case scenario. Yeah. So we do a lot of different scenarios. It's kind of like getting with your buddies when you're a kid, and you guys like play war, and you make a plan. You're like, all right, you're going to do this, and you go do that, and I'm going to come around on this end. I'm going to get this one here. And then you just you know, implement the attack and accomplish the objective, and it's awesome. That's, that's what training is like. It's really cool. I enjoy it. So, <laughs> it's all got no, to it's, say about that. I think any kind of training where you feel like you're going to be a hero is motivating, you know? You're like, when this is done, lives will be changed because I was faithful in this, you know? Mm-hmm. So, question four, I think, definitely goes into all this. Do you have any stories about the job or any ridiculous calls, say, like rescuing cats from trees? I was- <laughs> and or have you seen anything of the supernatural nature in your firefighting? So, I always like to joke that in the academy, my favorite class was rescuing cats from trees. That was my favorite class, but it's not a real class. Oh. Um. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a shame. I know. I agree because I love cats and I really enjoy that part I of the job. I really love cats. I love them. You, have you seen that video online with a girl coming apart? No, but she I should have called the She should have called the fire department because she was having a conniption about cats. Please don't do that. You've never seen it? Especially at 3 a.m. That's the worst. I get a call at 3 a.m. about Are cats. you guys playing Nintendo when you're not... Uh, when you're waiting for calls and you're just at the firehouse, are you are you guys playing like ping pong and Nintendo? Or? Periodically, sometimes we've played video games, and I never played video games growing up, so I'm really bad at it. <laughs> but we play, and they're really cool about it. And so you're um, getting paid to play video, video games, right? Um, just we're essentially on call 24 hours. Mm, okay. So if anything happens, we drop everything and go. I mean, we're in the middle of cooking, and we drop everything and go. Um, Has there ever been a time where you got a fire call, you were cooking in the firehouse, but when you left, you left the pan on, and when you got back to the firehouse, it, it, there was a fire in the firehouse. So that is a rookie mistake, and I was a rookie, and I did do that. But <laughs> <laughs> I just made up that story. No, it's I, true. It happens. Tell, it, right. it does happen. Are you but, trying to tell me you burned down the firehouse? No, no, no. What happens is another station another engine comes to your house and covers the territory while you're out fighting fire and they got there and they were like yeah the pan was we took care of it and i was like oh sorry about that it was it was a loss the pan and the sweet potato were i think there's a deeper proverbial (laughs) lesson here uh while you're going to save the world make sure you've saved your own world first because wow that's deep 
No, I don't know how deep that really is. It's, it's just not. A, <laughs> it's just a wine, but okay. <laughs> I'm just saying that I think there's some kind of lesson there, and I can't put it together. Did something happen? It's gonna. I don't it's care. It's gonna sing. But just leave it in the background. I mean, how long does it last? She's. I don't know what she's actually talking about. Rebecca Smith is actually a sane person in her right mind, but she's convincing me that her washer machine is gonna go off here. It's gonna sing. A and song it's gonna for sing us. a song. Who ever heard of a singing washing machine? Only firefighters, apparently. They what's make good? them now. I don't know. I moved into the house. So what's it going to sing? Like, did you make crack corn or something or what? I don't know what the tune is. I can't make it out. And how loud is it going to be? And how long does it take to turn off? It's like, tune, 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 It's just done. Okay, so you just told us the story about how you burned down the firehouse. Sure. And what were you cooking? A sweet potato. See, that's not even worth it. it. If it was like bacon and eggs or something, but sweet potatoes, yeah. it, t- it takes a lot to make a sweet potato delicious. You need to like put marshmallows on it, butter. That is untrue, sir. <laughs> How dare you? I love a good sweet potato, though. <laughs> we got a whole bowl of them over there. Well, I mean, it's also a cheaper food if you're trying to survive in Europe, and you know, I'm going to survive over there on beans and sweet potatoes, apparently, now. Mm-hmm. All right, so. <laughs> You ever seen anything supernatural when you're out there? Like okay. Anybody brought back to life? Like holy smoke! Okay, a um, couple stories. Let me finish my stories. Like that holy smoke. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so. Holy. Do you guys ever say that out there? <laughs> holy smoke, Fireman Steve. <laughs> I'm gonna start that now. Holy smoke! <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a joke in there somewhere. Yeah. It's gonna happen. So a uh, couple things. One. One accident I saw, this girl apparently fell asleep behind the wheel and went off the highway, down an embankment, under a bridge. There was rushing water underneath her vehicle. She self-extricated. When we got there, she was walking well, what's extricated? around. She removed herself from the accident. Oh, extract. From, from the extract, vehicle. Extract, mm-hmm. extricated, okay. And there was rushing water underneath her. Like, the car was in rushing water and that's dangerous in and of itself but how'd she get out she broke the window i don't know how she got out but she did and she was walking around when we got there and i was like i looked at the vehicle and i was like you can't tell me there's not a god like there how is she alive right now and walking let me go back over this she flew off a bridge she went off the highway down an embankment under a bridge under a bridge and there was rushing water underneath so her car went to rushing water she somehow got out. Yeah. How old was this woman? Oh, she must have been in her 20s, early 20s, mid-20s okay. maybe. And what did she accredit her safety to? Did she say, God did this? Or? We never spoke to her because she, like, the ambulance was there, so she walked herself to the ambulance. Is there any chance this woman could have been an MK Ultra ninja experiment? I'd say it is probable because this <laughs> normal people just don't do that or maybe god was like no it's not your time to die yeah it's true because it's if it's not your tomorrow time, it's is your time, time to die when you're cooking rice or something <laughs> i'm no, not cooking happened. rice tomorrow that's happened because patrick swayze if i can persuade you to believe this so <laughs> patrick swayze he was in his this is true i read the book the time of our lives he was in a plane now, this is according to his testimony. So right. I, don't, I don't know how true it is. But right. he says he was in a plane mm-hmm. and he was like smoking cigarettes and drinking up there. And he's by himself, you know, in his own little plane. And he said that he did something wrong with the cabin pressure and the oxygen levels came down. And he said he fell asleep. Very dangerous. And yep. he woke up and the plane was just going in circles mm-hmm. for 20 minutes. Yep. Somehow it was on autopilot. Yep. Um, what was my point in all that? That. Oh, no, my point's this, that God may allow you to survive one thing only to bring you down another way. Like, for instance, Paul in the Bible was beaten, uh, cat of nine tails, he was in shipwrecks, bitten by poisonous snakes, and he didn't die because God's like, no, you're going to die through execution in such and such date. So God really has an ultimate game plan. And I think that ties into firefighting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Was your, so one of our training captains said, not everyone is meant to live. Um, and that was helpful uh, because I've you know been on calls where I mean, a 23-year-old girl um, stabbed to death. So 
Just, Where was this? It was... Lexington? No. No, but we went... It's not here. This is not where I work. <laughs> I do not work here. Oh, I apologize. Um, I'll, I'll take that out. Um, so... I remember the number here. 30. Okay. But I, uh, like, in my department, like, and where that is, not here, but, um, yeah, she... Hey, let me stop it for a second. Okay. Yeah, it's just a new, just a new file. Okay. All right. We're back. And we're back. And uh, talking about fire training here. Um, I'm asking her... <clears throat> no, we're, we're past that. We're talking about stories on the job. Mm-hmm. Um, miracles. You know, what about a situation where maybe you thought you were going to die? So, um, the most scared I think any of us have ever been on the department is when we are on the highway because people drive like they're the only people in the world and people be texting and like, no regard for the big red truck and the big flashing lights. So you're saying that you've been actually more concerned on the not, highway, not so much at the fires. No, you've no, been not more concer- concerned when you're getting to the fires and that you're trying to navigate through the dangerous streets. Uh, no, when we're running a car wreck and then people drive like crazy, like really crazy, um, really dangerous. There was an incident where uh, somebody was on the highway there was an engine blocking for a car accident and they were working the accident and this person went through all of the cones all of the cones set out so you know like let, giving people ample warning don't drive over here she went through every single cone and she scraped all the way down the side of the engine and almost struck one of our firefighters um so it's not the fires that are dangerous it's the people yes it's the, especially the people the on, highways, the, on the highways. The highways. doing a lot of highway. Act. So firefighters, mm-hmm. we all know this, that not only are you responding to fires, but you've got emergencies like car accidents. And things. My friend told me that mm-hmm. they ripped him out. They extracted him with yeah. an axe when he was in Iraq. So. Yeah, yeah. The jaws of life. Yes. What can you tell us about the jaws of life? We've got the spreaders and the cutters. And um, those are the jaws of life, essentially. Um, but they can take a car we've in training we took a car and folded it in half using the spreaders and the cutters a chain and a winch how does it affect you psychologically seeing the things that you see uh so i think it it's not for everyone um like when i saw that gal you know 23 year old girl who was you know she passed away she was not with us by the time we got to the call it was a stabbing and Um, my captain was kind of concerned. He just, he took me to his office and, you know, asked if I was okay. Or he didn't necessarily ask that, but I let him know, Hey, I'm okay. Like I didn't see it happen. I came after the fact. And, you know, I think that's a different, it's a different thing. It's really hard to survive a stabbing. Yeah. If you, yes, it is. You bleed out. Probably better be better off being shot. Maybe just depends on where you get cut or where the trauma is in your body, you know, how much blood comes out <laughs> so mm. uh you have about two three liters of blood in your body you know if she was stabbed by was this a domestic thing or like yeah a, it on um, two females going at it two female fights two females going they, at they it with some upset knives upset with each other okay uh yeah it was self-defense for the survivor it was i think that was what it was deemed in court um Anyway, like showing up on on that, like I was okay. I did not see the the trauma happen. We were there after the fact. It is very sad. Um, my goal is to try to help preserve life. And that's partly why the fire department was better for me than like military or um, you know being a police officer is because it. I don't want to be put in a situation where I might have to take life. Right. Um, that is not my call. I respect people who are in those positions. You know, my brother was in the military for many years and retired from military, and I totally respect him and all of our armed forces, and I'm grateful for their sacrifice because it is a sacrifice. Um, 
it, it's been said that it's a hell of a thing to kill a man. So that's not something I ever want to have to face. Um, so in fire service, it's not something we do. We go in to try to preserve life, save life. Um, but not everyone is meant to live. My training captain told us that, and he's right, and it's true, and we just do the best we can. And, you know, there's, um, yes, about supernatural things. I mean, um, I've been with paramedics who've prayed with um, patients on the way to the hospital. Um, And, you know, we've done CPRs on people where... Mostly CPRs don't come back, but I've been very fortunate where most of the CPRs I've worked, they have come back. We got a heartbeat. And it's not like in TV shows where they come back and they're like, oh, I love you. And then, you know, they start talking and, you know, like they, it's a romantic moment or something in TV. But in real life, you get a heartbeat back. They are unconscious. And there's a lot of... um tubes inside of them to help them breathe and live uh so we've um i guess we've worked a lot of cprs and people come back um from from the brink and we're very fortunate not every because there's a lot of people who've had their whole career never had somebody come back in a cpr that must be depressing for them you know they have no confidence like well everybody every time i try this it doesn't work so here it goes again (laughs) i don't know how somebody back me up because every time i try it (laughs) these guys are just just doing my job my breath i mean what's going on (laughs) i don't know maybe we there's jokes in the fire service are like oh they've got the black cloud the black cloud yeah (laughs) like you know they have a term in vegas where they send a guy in the room to bring like an unluckiness, they call them the cooler, mm. where people will stop winning when the person with bad luck is around them. Okay. You don't want somebody like that working in the fire department. No. You know? <laughs> it's not the person. You know who'd be a great That's firefighter? That's a superstition. Let me tell you who'd be a great firefighter. Lay it on me. Iceman or Aquaman. <laughs> Iceman's like, hold on. Well, that's Superman. Well, he could blow it out. I mean, he did that in the, in the show or the, yeah. uh, the movies and stuff. Um, there was something, yes, I wanted to ask you, like, since we've heard some gruesome stuff, mm-hmm. what do you have as far as, what is the most ridiculous call? Like, you had to go out to save Jerry the Clown, and he was in a tree, like, oh, I'm a clown in the tree, or what? First of all, if it's a clown, I have nothing to do with clowns. Okay, no clowns. Have, nope. <laughs> if you're a clown, do not expect the firefighters to save you, you're on your own. Um, <laughs> no, do you have any ridiculous, funny stories, like maybe a call you went to, and it was absolutely ridiculous. Oh gosh, there's so many. I don't well, know. Well, then if I you should have no problem them. telling us one. Well, I'm trying to think of them. Um, I don't know if I want to say like, "Oh, it's so ridiculous." Because if people are scared, like I want them to always call us, even though it's sometimes at three o'clock in the morning. Like, really, could you have called us like at eleven? <laughs> so um, something happened, and they waited like three hours to call you. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Like, my bum, <laughs> I put something up there on oh, accident. I can't. It's too, it's sad, though. I can't. It's Right. Mm. So you have a story about somebody that did something sad to themselves. And no, it's, uh, they just now needed. Now they have to see a counselor. They needed a higher level of care, and it's something we couldn't right. provide. Right, as you were saying, you, yeah. don't, you don't want to expose the mentally ill and exploit them. And the, the physically, she is physically Right, physically incapable. challenged. We have a nothing but respect for those people so we don't want to yeah I, it's too sad so like it's hard for me to to say stuff like that about our patients because like i i do have a lot of compassion for them they're people too and you know creating okay. god's image since, just like the rest since of you us. can't think of a ridiculous story about firefighting i'm going to just give you a scenario Lay it on me. What and you, you tell me what you would do in this scenario okay, okay. let's say you came to someone's home mm-hmm and they were uh, suffering from, like, maybe they were stuck. They, they, they got their arms stuck in, say, you know, this is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. 
coming up with a situation like this. There's I, a I, very I, crude <laughs> story that was in the news about a guy in a pool. Next question. What's it like, <laughs> what's it like being a, a woman in this field? Is there... We've touched on that a little bit. Is there pressures from the other firefighters like... You know, what's it like being a woman in that field? Um, and do you have any peers? Are there other, are you the only one in your station? Uh, no, there's like, I'm at a multi-company house, so there's eight total people on my... How many women? Oh, in the whole department, we've got maybe 30 women. There's 30 women that are firefighters in your... In the whole department. That's great. I didn't think that number would be that much. Yeah, out of 600. Awesome. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a work in progress, but I I love the diversity. Do you guys have code names like in Top Gun? We need to. <laughs> now I want that. <laughs> when she said that, like we should. Iceman. <laughs> Water boy. Water boy. Axe dude. <laughs> now I want this. You should bring this up. Some of us have nicknames um, that we got in training, like one kid who just came out of training introduced introduced himself to me as radar because he looks like radar from mash yeah i think <laughs> firefighters need these these names it would it would really just bring a, a more fun to the job yeah um as far as being a woman in the fire department i mean i i Were you, okay i thought you told me that in the beginning there was a little i have a, a very heat. difficult first four years of my career to the point where I almost quit my job. I was so unhappy. And my friends have told me too, like, you looked old. Like when we saw you, you just looked aged. It was aging. It was the stress of not being almost welcome. Was that it? Uh, Something like that. I mean, the treatment was, um, it was subtle and insidious the way the cruelty and was um, it because they said you didn't have, they didn't think you had the strength or the, or the what was it? I mean, because I'm strong. I'm probably strong. You are jokers. stronger than me. But, thank you. You do okay. Thanks. Well, you work at it. <laughs> but some, I don't know if it's because I'm a woman. I don't want to like speculate. Right. I mean, I can speculate, but I don't know. I can just say that no one, and I mean, nobody deserves the kind of treatment that I got for the first four years of my career. Nobody deserves that. And no it's one, sad to think that the reason. management would be involved in that. You know, of a, you, know, you can put out fires, but you can't love can't your neighbor. Can't sit here. Yeah, you can't love your neighbor. Can't sit here. Seat's like, taken. Put out a thousand fires, but you don't have love. You don't have nothing. There's a scripture in the Bible about that. That's right. Like a man can have all these great things. You can do all these great things. What is it? But if you don't have love, you have nothing. Nothing. And that is accurate. Listen, I got like. So you weren't invited by them to have coffee and chips when they're all have playing Nintendo. They're like, we don't want you playing Smash Brothers with us. You just um, wait there in the corner for a fire. If only they would talk to me, but it was more insidious. It was like if I walked into your room, they would like leave or something. Really? It was. It was really weird. If I would talk to some people, well, like, did you walk in like, hi? I mean, yeah, of course I did. <laughs> That's how I talk to people. These guys were like, look. <laughs> We're firemen. We don't talk like that. Sometimes people wouldn't say anything to me at all, like acknowledge my existence or Is it because you have to be cold to be a fire person? No, because they're just... I'm not going to say it. All right. (laughs) Yeah. Bless them, Lord. It's a dad joke. Um, It was just really rough. And again, I'm not... Like, I could speculate, but I'm just going to say, like, no one for any reason whatsoever deserves that kind of treatment. And mm-hmm. I'm in a good place now. I have a really right, great so you're crew. in a better place, and yeah. you're just making us aware that, you know, in certain, it's not the field, but certain places that you may choose to work in life, there's going to be people there yeah. that, you know, they, they secretly work for the devil. <laughs> we have to pray Aww. for them. They yeah. could be members of various secret societies. <laughs> That's or probably when they go home, they could have some kind of, uh, you know, lord vampire in their basement that they bring Oof. gifts to every now and then. Yeah, you find jerks in every field, unfortunately. And, you know, like, Paul struggled with something that he asked the Lord for relief from, and God has told him, my grace is sufficient for you. And, you know, 
he accepted that. He's like, yeah, you're right. Um, because it caused, it forced me into seeking the Lord more, into praying for those who persecute you, who do all manner of evil against you, that sort of thing. So is that what kept you going, the Lord? Because uh, you said you're about to quit. So what kept you going? I um, I made it known that I was uh, to some folks that listen. Like if something doesn't change, I'm gonna give it. You know, about six months, and. If nothing changes, I'm um, I'm done, and that's for real. What were you gonna do though? Uh, were you gonna like go and be a cop after that? Or? Oh no, I was just looking into anything, something else, something mm. different. I mean, there's plenty of jobs. You're glad that didn't happen, right? Yeah, absolutely, because I didn't want to quit. My job. I love my job, right? Um, but I also would like to like to go to work, and I'm not the only one who has had that experience, but um, but I mean. I don't suffer graciously, so I was very vocal about it. <laughs> um, fire is just so terrible. I think to myself, I would be, I'm putting myself in your shoes, I would love to be a firefighter in this sense that you must get such a, a sense of gratification of you're saving people who basically could have died or they could have been severely scarred for life. Mm-hmm. You're preventing a lot of that. So, yeah, um, I, I have a lot more questions, but this is just coming to my mind right now. Okay. Let's talk about fire prevention. People out there are probably like, well, what kind of tips could you share for that? Like, I'm in my house, you know, how can I be extra careful? Okay. Um, real quick, I want to be sure that I don't paint, you know, the fire department in a bad light. I just had a really bad experience because a couple bad eggs in right. in the two different stations. We're talking about at. workplaces in general. Right. I mean, you have one bad egg in one place and it can make life very difficult no matter where you're at. Absolutely. And that was kind of my experience, but like for four years. So it, right. it's much different now and it's not the whole department. And the message should be, right, you know, what you're saying is like, no matter where you go, you may find people who are bad eggs that are going to create the bad experiences, but it's not the industry as a whole. You just have to find or you know, where you're supported. Yeah. yeah. Find your people. Yeah. Um, and hopefully get stationed with them. So, yeah. Um, anyway, as far as uh, safety in the home, um, one of the biggest things you can do is... Excuse me. Um, I don't know if it's the biggest thing, but it is a tip. Like when you go to sleep at night, you need to shut your doors because that is a firewall. Essentially, that is a break from the fire to you. It so it gives it less access to you. And there are homes that have been completely burnt down, but the bedroom where the people were sleeping is completely untouched. You're talking about the bedroom door. Yeah. When you go to sleep at night, shut your door. Oh yeah. I always do that. Yeah. Good. Um, if anything happens, you will have, a safe space, essentially. Um, so if you if the right, smoke alarm wakes you up, extra, you'll have... It's extra time, right? Yeah, extra time. Well, that smoke comes in. Because mm-hmm. I, I was... I have a fire story, but I'll get to it later. Um, but one of the you guys told... It. You want to hear it now? You should just share it. We just, just flow with it. You don't have to follow me. You just flow with it. Well, I'm doing both of flowing and, and non-flowing. I'm in the the middle flow. Come on, Eric. Be wild. I, this is wild Eric. Yeah. You know, the most wild people in the world wait till you least expect it, then they jump out of you. See, the wild uh, cheetah or the lion when they hunt, they're not out there just shaking and dancing for you. But when you least mm-hmm. expect it, they'll just rip out your larynx. Yeah. So <laughs> expect that. Uh, I was driving down the road, mm-hmm. and my grandmother sold me a car. And long story short, uh, the car was destroyed by a flood. I was listening to Iron Maiden's uh, Ghost of the Navigator. And for whatever reason, uh, that song's about people who died at sea and whatever. There was a flood, flash flood, it destroyed the car. Okay. Mm-hmm. That is contrast. Next car I bought was the same exact car, but it was a darker shade. Driving down the road, and the opposite of that curse happened. The car caught on fire. So I'm driving down the road. My car's on fire. I see black smoke coming out of the... Does popcorn come out of the... No, no popcorn. That's the inside joke. Popcorn. <laughs> popcorn. Jesse Diplana. Popcorn. popcorn. Came out of the steering wheel. <laughs> we, uh, well, I was just driving, and uh, I pulled into work, and it just so happened to be that where I worked at was adjacent to a fire department. So I mm. actually pulled into adjacent to a fire department, with my car on fire. Yeah. And they saw it from the window and they sure. came out and just blew me out. You sure. Know? Good, good. And 
they said, you know, you're lucky you got out of the car because if black smoke would have came through the vents and you would have inhaled it, you would have died because you can, your body can only take so much black smoke before you die. Okay. That's, that's what they told me. I mean, all right. I mean... Is that true? Like, that, that's what you said. So, yeah, but it's not like an instant thing. Well, that's what he was telling me. Well, maybe, I mean, maybe, it is pretty toxic, but... Maybe it's a tall tale. I don't know. But, I mean, maybe the, the type of smoke that was coming out, he said if black smoke would have, would have came out of your vents and you would have breathed it, it could have killed you. That's what he told me. I'm going to ask people about that because, I mean, if you just inhale it, you don't just die instantly. I don't... Mm. F- no. Well, maybe he looked at my stature and was like, well, this guy looks like a weakling. And <laughs> if he would have, if he would have smoked that smoke. Eric, Wild Eric is not a weakling. I mean, I could totally take him, but he's not a weakling. <laughs> no, we already talked about it. She could take me, but if I had time to think about it, I know I would know the traps to, to I wouldn't take her head on. No. <laughs> it's like Captain America, if he was fighting the Hulk, he wouldn't take him. He would outthink him. Mm-hmm. So we went into a forest, and I had to kill her like the some kind of crazy Nazi, uh, you know, bout. I would set traps for her. I would set like mm-hmm. weights out like, or dumbbells. Yeah. It would get and me she wouldn't time. be. She'd be able, so tempted to lift them, and then when she lifted one, it would yeah. pull a cord and you then blow her head off. Leave a, a dumbbell yeah. or a barbell in the woods and not lift it. Right. You must lift it. That's you would get whole, me right. every time. So there's more than one way to skin a chicken. And if you're in a, if you're fighting for your life, first off, I would probably just let her kill me or I'd kill myself because I'd, if like the Nazis are like, you must fight each other. This must happen. Kill your friend. I would try to take the knife and just kill myself. It's like, I'll see you in Zion. As in Zion. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) I kill myself because I don't want to kill you. Oh. Yeah, I mean, other people would kill you. You know, when, if if somebody actually made you like kill your, if they put you in like a, a fighting pit and they're like, "There's a knife, you guys have to kill each other." I would just kill myself, or hmm. I would just say, "I have the knife now. Send your boy out here." Well, they can't. And I will kill him. Well, if you guys are like friends and stuff, you could just be like, "We're not going to do it," and then you, they might you, just shoot you to death. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You let them blow you away, yeah. and then the Lord, if he wants to really. Do like a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego moment. Abednego. I'm glad you corrected that. He would let the bullets bounce off them, turn them into rubber mm-hmm. temporarily, and the bullets would bounce back yeah. and kill all the Pharisees or whoever's... Uh, People throwing sub- them in the If it's Nazis or whatever, subduing you. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so how is the money and benefits of being a firefighter? Okay, so... <laughs> There is the yacht. I'm just kidding. Um, we should do a, a <laughs> refill. Yeah. Do right, I'm going to do a... I'm going to pause it. Pause. Do it. I don't know if, if you can pause it or... Okay. So we're talking about the money and the benefits of being a firefighter. <laughs> like, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Like, yes. do you have a yacht now? Are you able to buy everyone Christmas presents? Even like the second cousins? <laughs> Are you When you go to the grocery store... Would you buy like the the really expensive meats that are organic? And no, John would not allow that. <laughs> he doesn't want you buying an organic meat. No, because you're a firefighter. Nope. I don't get it. Um, he's because like, he has his own meat at the, at the farm. No, no, no. Just organic is kind of like a. Is it organic is a scam? Really? Yeah. You sure. I will say that I am aware that if you have severe celiac disease, you should, and like even meat that you eat can affect your um, intestinal tract. Tract, uh, you should probably have grass-fed, grass-finished beef. Other than that, like your body can handle it just fine. Okay, well <laughs> that, that's good to know. So yeah. what other? Th- so you, what you're saying here, we're trying to translate for the audience. You're making great money. As a firefighter? So... Is that too personal? You don't want to get into it. I make a livable wage because, you know, we talked about being at DCCC where I was, like, Mm. below the poverty line. So you're getting paid much more than being a DCCC gym managerial... Wellness coordinator and adjunct faculty. Yes. 
I um, was able to purchase this house and I adopted a dog and um, paid my bills. And Dogs are expensive, especially if they get sick. Well, I adopt seniors um, specifically because they generally don't get adopted and they mm. need love too. So I give them, you know, Millie, who I had, I was like, best best year of her life. You but were, I was joking, but she did last a year. an older dog. <laughs> yeah. And then we How, have... That's, that's actually very thoughtful. I love it. Thank you. I just, and it's because you're rolling in the dough at the fire department that I you're able to do okay. help out the elderly dogs. <laughs> and make a livable wage, which is good. Um, so, there, you know, there's folks who say, you deserve to be I can tell more. you this. I'm in her house right now, and if it's any reflection of the money she's making, Aww. she has a fully stocked <laughs> bar. Uh, with do. Maker's Mark, Listen, wine, I just had a birthday and Christmas. lots of wine, I mean, rows of wine. Yeah, and I and saw wine now. So. I don't see any... No, there actually was beer in the fridge. There was beer. Yeah, so, there's <laughs> And also, she's got very nice things in the house. Thank I mean, you. plants everywhere. I do love my plants. This... If you're a firefighter, you can live like this. You can save the elderly dogs. They have one year of life left. Aww. You can have beautiful cacti and, 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 and unknown plants in your home and stocks of bourbon and liquor and wine. It, it, do you want to be <laughs> living in poverty as a Walmart cashier oh or, or a college no, gym saying? associate? Okay. Or do you want to be dancing with the dinosaur of money? <laughs> Become I, a firefighter if you want money, baby. Well, you tired of the world looking down on you saying, hey, you can't afford it? I'm sorry, I can't date you. You see, I make more money than you. I'm an office it. paralegal. I'm a lawyer. You know, so you're married, but if you're mm-hmm. out there as a firefighter single again, mm-hmm. you know, and you, you know. Been there. So women have no problem dating a firefighter. And that's the thing, though. You're in a different bracket. So if you're a firefighting woman, mm-hmm. you probably wouldn't date someone who works at Dollar General, right? <laughs> this is the kind of money you're making. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. When I worked at Davidson County Community College mm-hmm. as a yeah. as a gym host and a, and whatever I did in that room, mm-hmm. when I worked in that room there and I was making dust for a living, Peanuts. I was dating guys who worked at Dollar General. But now, no. the, now <laughs> that I'm a firefighter, I would never, I even though she's married, this is hypothetical, <laughs> I would never date anyone who worked at Dollar General because oh I'm a firefighter and I only date other firefighters and police officers and people that make over a certain amount. So that, that's basically what you were saying about the money, right? <laughs> Essentially, yes. No. <laughs> As, I'm not. Uh, see, until I become a famous podcaster, I won't be able to date mm. uh, Norwegian pop stars. Maybe. She might be but like, once my. I'm trying to be Sugar Mama to somebody. Once it starts taking off, people are like, all right, Wild Eric is actually dating a female pop star. You in, did it. In Norwegia. Eric, I'm so proud of you. Well, you know, you got to make a baby sometime. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Tell me about when you are when you storm through a door mm-hmm. in firefighting. Do they teach you in the manual, save the babies first and leave the adults? No, because um, if you're in a smoke-filled environment, it's very difficult to see. Um, so you just do a search. A quick, it's a rapid search. What about the baby sticker? When I was in New Jersey as a kid, I had a little baby sticker on the window that said, save the baby first. Oh, well, I mean, if, like, if we find a victim, we're not just going to leave them there and go searching for a baby. What the baby is out with grandma, you know? Oh, okay. So, um, whenever we find a victim, we do a search. We rescue the victim. We continue searching. And if there's any more victims, we rescue them as well. Um... But we do a rapid search, quick search for it, which is a quick search for a victim. That's a primary search. And then a secondary, which is a more detailed search. Because we need to get in there quick and get them out before the fire you know, overtakes them and the smoke overtakes them. And then a more detailed search after we've put some water on the fire. So is there anything else you want to add about the money? Other than being great. I think you said it all. Okay. 
Um, what? <laughs> but a question number I'm, seven. I'm not that wealthy, to be honest. But I make a livable wage. I just want to be clear about All that. All right. So you're not going to be like making lawyer money, and you're not going to be making Walmart cashier money, but somewhere comfortably in between where you can afford all the booze you want in your home. It's a good career. Also, all of that is like from Christmas and birthday. She also has had a, a birthday lifetime supply of cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> also from my birthday because we had a pajama party and right. we served breakfast. So what do you see firefighting looking like in a hundred years compared to now? Are they using robots currently? So we use uh, drones to help locate the seat of the fire, we might be able to locate victims with that. We could um, use it. We used it in the fire in Winston-Salem when they had the the fertilizer plant went up. So drones were used there. So drones have become very helpful. And now, do you run the drone personally or is there a drone guy? There is a drone team. Um, so it's a special operations team. And they run it. And how are they? Are they nice and nerdy and friendly? They're awesome. I, I know what your problem them. is. Are you a Star Trek fan? Because <laughs> I can only relate this in terms of Star Trek. Are you like a New Jersey Jewish nerd? I don't know what I am. <laughs> what is this accent? I don't know. I just It's great. I, I, what I do is I just picture whoever I'm impersonating in my brain and it just comes out. <laughs> All right, nerd. I mean... I am a nerd, it, actually. I know. I love it. So you're, they're already <laughs> using robots... Do you, still, do you see yourself being replaced like McDonald's cashiers have been? Oh, that's, that is kind Holograms of Holograms go in. They can't be burned. Uh, no. Robots. Hol- Elon Musk holograms. is making the primes. They're androids. Do you think there's going to be android firefighters in a few years? I don't know. Because the uh, fire and life safety might make um, everything so safe. Like building standards and mm. stuff. So, so safe that... You could be put out of a job by new safety measures. I don't know that we'd be put out of a job because there's a lot of different things that we do because people still have car accidents. People still have medical emergencies. People will still burn the outside. of People will find ways to mm. <laughs> make mistakes. So what you're saying is a lot of accidental fires, a lot of ex- accidental fires will stop, but there's always arson. There is always arson, yeah. What mm. do you know about arson? Um, that... The fire and life safety, I mean, the fire investigator, sorry, will find out um, how the fire started and um, you will most likely be caught and prosecuted. I know the the guy who does it here, he's a member at the CrossFit gym and he's really good at what he does. And he's uh, he's put some people behind bars for... So arson, arson doesn't pay. It doesn't. You will be found out. And if it does pay, it's very temporary because they will find you. Mm. So, yeah, I don't recommend it. <laughs> what are some of the here best... Here, folks. I, I got a question. You know, speaking about accuracy and everything, what are some of the best fire movies or f- movies made about firefighting? Do you see Backdraft? And what's that thing with Dennis Leary had a show that was called Save Me? Or something like that. Okay, so if you look around, you notice I don't have a TV. Roxanne with Steve Martin. Oh, that's a, I remember that movie ages ago. It was about firefighting. Well, the guy, it's about um, the that old play from um, very famous play from England. There was a play about firefighting? A billion years ago. There was no, a play about firefighting. It's not called Roxanne. It's, um... Cyrano? Yeah, Cyrano de Bergerac. Yeah, yeah. They did. it was a, kind of like a Shoot. cross between firefighting and Cyrano. I just hit my head recently, so it was really difficult for me to think of Because he had a very large nose, and he was mm-hmm. trying to, you know, woo, woo Daryl lady. Hannah. But his backstory in that movie was he was a firefighter. firefighter yes. Yeah. But it was great. And there was a yeah. scene where he, like, climbed up a house and... Oh, that's another thing we did in training that was very cool. It's called the church dome climb where you extend the 30 foot ladder and um, you climb, like it's suspended by rope in that, like tied to the top. And you've got people on all four corners with the rope, the four ropes holding them and just, it's just held up by the ropes. And you've got four people on each corner on the bottom, butting it with their boots and you climb up full gear, climb up one side 
and then over the other side and you climb down the other side full gear straight up in the air so this is a this is a stop slamming your arms down (laughs) i know i'm sorry making these noises i move a lot when i talk noisy human no i'm saying (laughs) so this is this a technique you're explaining here it's a it's just a training thing that we do team building training and they did use it at one point in and it has it's this is like ropes you're saying that are extended from like what the high ladder they to it? tied ropes to it and then they extended the ladder and then you have to butt it at the bottom and there's um people holding the four ropes in like in all yeah, it's four an exercise directions. to i'm kind of confused honestly okay i'll look it up online what's it called the church dome climb. So they used it in a church the that was church. a big dome, and they needed like a, a light bulb change because it was like smoking or something. It's called the church dome climb. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm looking up here on Google and see. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. If you are afraid of heights, I was gonna say this earlier before I was interrupted. But Sorry, <laughs> I'm an interrupter. That's why I'm a podcaster. Interrupty pants. Um, <laughs> so. Um, they weed out some folks who are afraid of heights by putting them in situations where they have to climb ladders and they weed out people who are claustrophobic. So you're trying to tell me in some of the training, they actually do this on purpose to weed out those who are afraid of heights. So they do it for many reasons and that is kind of like a byproduct of it as well. Yeah, you can't have somebody who's afraid of heights being a firefighter, right? Yeah. yeah, Because you have to go up. (laughs) <laughs> and you end in tight spaces. So if you're claustrophobic at all, like, and you put on your mask for your SCBA, that can make someone who is claustrophobic feel even more claustrophobic. And we can't have people ripping their masks off when they're in mm. uh, IDLH. So you've never seen Backdraft with Kurt Russell? I have. Is just a long time ago. That was a ago. really big fire person movie. Yeah. Uh, fire, I, fire movie. Let's see. I'm a, I just haven't watched it in a billion years. Back. Hold on. Because that's, that's all, I'm trying to think. I love movies. Mm-hmm. Backdraft was a big one. 1991, looking on the computer here. Um, the rating is a 6.7. So <laughs> And the Rotten Tomatoes? On IMDb. And the oh. thing is, maybe they're a little wrong. I mean, it's, it's close enough to a 7. It's probably worth watching, especially if you're a Kurt Russell fan. It's also got Bobby De Niro. You have to watch it if you're in the fire service. And I have watched it. I was a kid when I watched it. It's a Ron that. Howard film. Oh, let me read From Happy Days. From Happy Days? Yeah, because he was... Uh, yeah. Know, with, he was the main character in, in uh, Happy Days. Yeah. Ron Howard. But no, he's you know he's known for making good movies. Yeah. Um, who else is in here? I'm looking at the picture. Kurt Russell, William Baldwin, Robert De Niro. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's the only thing to, so, I could think of was the two firefighting. I always tell people jokingly that, yeah, everything you see on TV, like Station 19 and Rescue and all that, it's totally accurate. It is 100% like that. And then I shake my head. No. <laughs> it's, what, so you're, you're saying it's not like that? It's not like that at all, no. Like, those are all life-altering, career like once in a career time, like kind of calls and they have it every episode, every, every week. And it's not, it's not that dramatic. Are you saying it's, this show is depicting live calls? Um, it could be, and some of them probably not. And I mean, you know, Hollywood just takes their creative, um, liberties. And- like, yeah. I haven't watched a lot of these. Uh, like I've never actually, from what I remember, I've never seen any kind of firefighting movie except for Roxanne. So I, I want to, the reason why I bring up Backdraft is because I want to go back and watch it. You haven't watched Backdraft? I haven't even seen that. No, but why is there no it? firefighting? You know, the only modern thing I can think of firefighting films would be, or movies or shows, is the Dennis Leary show, Save Me. Huh. So yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I have an interest in firefighting. But I haven't yet done a dive, which after this podcast, I would feel obligated now to go watch uh, Backdraft. So you uh, can always go to a firehouse and tour. I mean, if you just go to a station and be like, hey, I'd like to have a tour. Usually they're pretty open about that. I'm like, all right, well, here's the, the well, truck. I have an interest, <laughs> but I mean, I, I also live a very busy life, which mm-hmm. I'm working about three jobs in order to fund my trip to Norway. Mm-hmm. But when I get to Norway, I might have a lot of spare time and might see how they fight fires. And I might give you a call and say, 
You know what they got over here? They've got something called the foam launcher, and it blows a bunch of foam mm -hmm. and puts out fires instantly. Oh, they have a big... We have foam. Oh, you got foam too, Yeah, huh? everybody's got foam. Yeah. Oh, how do you use it? Um, you have a foam gun? Blow foam? A foam blower? I'll foam blow you. <laughs> I will foam I am going you. to blow you with foam. <laughs> it's not a euphemism. <laughs> Put out your fires. It's uh <laughs> So uh on our trucks we have a class A and a foam shooter? A foam cannon. It mixes with the water inside the engine. So um you just blow out. It's blowing like a foam. Right. Yep. And we've so got a you, fog nozzle that will kind of agitate it and mix it even more. So agitate the fog nozzle. It, they call Blow it the foam gun. Making water wet because there's a lot of surface tension on some like items. So if you put water on it, the surface tension will keep the water from penetrating it. So if you have soap or foam, as it were, in the water, mm. then it will penetrate those items and put out the fire. It will saturate How the fire. How fashionable are the costumes you guys wear? The costumes? <laughs> Wait, so you mean uniform <laughs> i'm fully aware it's called uniform i'm just being silly but um, how fashionable are, are the uh, you know your superhero outfits everything is ill-fitting for me what are the colors because i'm just what are the colors um red and i picture it being red and yellow no uh like, like starburst like our bunker gear is kind of like show me a picture of your uniform tan i guess or but it has um Reflectors on Because it. I think you guys would put out a lot more fires if you would look better. Wow. <laughs> that, wow. It, uh, this is all about fashion. It is. I sent you this. Look cool doing the thing that you do. All right, so there I am on the truck. Yeah, I don't... All right, Wild Eric here. Final stretch, talking about how if you're going to be putting out a fire, you better look great and you better have a great costume on if you're a firefighter, okay? Yellow and red were the traditional colors. I also like a straight red, but mm. it seems like the picture you just showed me of yourself was rather bland, and I didn't like that. Well, I want to be rescued by somebody who dresses well. Excuse me, very embarrassing. Wow. I don't believe that. Sorry, I had to hear that. That's not actually what happened. That was a demon that passed Negative. through. Negative. <laughs> The superstitious. I, you know, I, I actually that, lab was, that was Wild Eric. That wasn't. Which, that wasn't firefighter. <laughs> Firefighters don't do that. Yeah, never. I've never heard any gas. Well, in, listen. Let me just tell you house. this: If a married married woman belches, does it matter? And if there's she's a... married, what are you looking at? <laughs> what are you looking at? I always tell the guys in the station, I'm like, I've never fought it a day in my life. Oh, we're going to go there now. You're going to turn my podcast into some like Ren and Stimpy. Uh, never have I ever. Gross thing. No, I've never done it. I've tried for years. There are people out there eating their sandwiches and they got to hear your gross stuff. They're, they're never, just vomited. But I've never done it. That's the thing. It's never happened for me. And All right. <laughs> I've already uh, asked you this question, but one more time. What are some fire tips you can give our audience so they won't be burned to death? Now... The first one was keep your bedroom door closed. At night when you're asleep, yes. What, what else can you tell us? Always have your smoke detectors and um, your carbon dioxide uh, detectors, carbon dioxide detectors working in working order. Check the dates on them. Change your batteries. If you need help doing that, always call your fire department. Um, we'll come out and we'll give you a, a smoke detector. For free? Yes. How many? Uh, as many as you need. And what's the... We install them. For free. We install them, yeah, and everything. You can give us a smoke detector for free. Yes, and we install it for you. And how much is that smoke detector worth? I don't know, because we just give it. And how and many do smoke... The thing. Like, can somebody scam and, like, go to such and such houses and, hey, let's call the fire department. They'll come out and give us a smoke detector. And you collect a bunch of them and just sell them in the black market? No, because we install them. They're not oh, okay. like, they're not in a package or anything. We just, we actually install it for you and well, that's cool we check know. the dates. Now, if yours is in date, we'll be like, this wasn't, this one is in good working order. It is in date. I got one for you. How so. can you, you know, when you're, you have, you ever heard of pizza burn? When you're eating a pizza that's really hot and it burns the roof of your mouth? Like, mm -hmm. how can I milk. stop that? Need some milk. But like, how, how to not do it? Just let it cool. <laughs> Dummy. But that's that's nearly <laughs> impossible, I found. I, so, John... Right, other fire tips. Go ahead. My husband gets on to me 
about that all the time because I'll eat wicked hot food all the time and I won't wait for it to cool. He's like, it's hot, babe. Don't do that. And I just, it doesn't matter. I'm just putting my face whole. Yeah. I I have that problem too. Yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> Give me some more lifesaver tips here. Come on. Uh, have a plan with your family, like an emergency plan. Fire plan, yeah. Mm-hmm. So good. if there's anything that goes wrong, like everybody knows that they need to escape and where and how to escape. Um, I've got... Uh, oh, this is important. Hold on. Look, Hold I have your something thought. very not important. Go okay. Uh, we watched a video of a fire in a, in a nightclub one night, and it killed a lot of people because they're all... Cr- they were very drunk and um, kind of... Some of the Great White Fire? Yes. And they all like collapse on top of each other in the doorway and in the windows and stuff listen follow the band out just get out the nearest exit no matter what don't wait for your friends don't look for anybody you just get out you just save yourself because if you go around looking for people you're gonna end up squished or you know dying from smoke inhalation or burning to death which would really suck i've also heard like during just a get fire out. aren't you supposed to crawl on your hands and knees to stay away from the you want to get low yeah, yeah um, because there's superheated air up because hot air goes up and mm. the smoke is unburned combustion and it mm. is full of toxic particles. So you don't want to breathe that in. Um, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, other noxious chemicals um, or toxic chemicals. So get low and get out for sure. Um, Does stop, drop, and roll work? If you yourself are on fire, yeah, you should not run around flailing. Like, if your limb is on fire flailing your limb, you need to um, get to where you can kind of, like, get a blanket on it and pat it out or roll around and roll it out. But you want to smother that fire that is on you. Don't fall asleep with hairspray. Okay. Still in your hair. (laughs) With hairspray in your hair? Why not? Because you're flammable. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You're more flammable. So, apparently, you know, I've got curly hair. You should try to wear Cur- non- Curl activator is also flammable. clothing. Huh? Curl activator is also flammable, and it's in a lot of, like, curly girl hair products. So, some people are more flammable than others. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> based on your genes. Mm. Mm-hmm. And the products you use based on your genes, yes. Right. Yes. I'm a Puerto Rican, so the oils mm. in my skin make me more flammable. Is it? Yeah? Yeah, it's true. Don't spontaneously combust. You know, I heard that's a thing. What are your feelings on that? It is Do you think hashtag it's... fake news. No. Yes. You told me no one in the history of mankind has ever spontaneously combusted. What about somebody who ingested a flint and a rock and had gas and whatever, and they something happened? You think nobody had a chemical reaction and they burst into flames? How is that debunked? It's never happened, Eric. Oh, you've known everyone on this planet? <laughs> what if somebody... Like, for instance... You're okay, right. You could... Bad, right now, you breaking could bad. spontaneously combust. Breaking bad is all about chemistry, right? Mm-hmm. So, in, in a lab, things can spontaneously combust. What if one night I'm eating a certain cuisine... It's that, possible. That's it's not probable. Th- all right. Well, you put... Anyway, so you, you, it's possible. Thank you. Um, okay any other last tips before we get into talking about Jesus oh the meat and potatoes I just want to get to it I like meat potatoes I'm trying to think of a time that Jesus put out a fire but I don't think he ever did I think that he uh, the closest thing I can think of that has the elements in it in the Bible would be no he actually consumed God consumed offerings from fire from heaven like when people mm-hmm. back in the day when they did an offering he consumed them yeah so the fire shot out of the sky and just burnt it up oh 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 right 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 the um the fire lapped it up uh yeah. i say nope 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 elijah the time of elijah i think it also happened in like mm-hmm. the adam and eve days that would be an interesting study fire shooting from heaven you can't prevent that fire you can't. That's true. And the uh, children of Israel followed um, the pillar of smoke by day and the pillar of so fire by night. Let's preface this desert. because, okay, number one, me and Rebecca, we met in college when she was running the gym there, and mm-hmm. I was studying to be a journalist. And then I realized I was way smarter than the curriculum, and I dropped out. But <laughs> I, um, I'm sorry. 
you know, if you're if you wake up one day and you okay. realize you're a genius, you're like, okay, I don't have to do school anymore. Oh, you should. You should. Okay, you stay in school. If that's to, for you. If yeah. that's for, it wasn't for Wild Eric because he's wild. Now, right. It's not for everyone. That's true. We met there, and I remember when I met Rebecca Smith. She was a Juice Plus distributor, whatever that is. <laughs> and then she, we and I, me and I, no, her and I, we talked about. Stephen Curtis Chapman and Dancing with the Dinosaur and how I thought it was the worst song ever. It's a terrible song. And we both realized that we were Christians. Yeah. And we've had a Jesus uh, linkage and Mm -hmm. we we had that in common for a long time. You were a Christian then? Well, no. What what happened was I was a Christian that had had, had a loss of faith for many years. And then recently I came back and my faith has increased and I'm trying to walk the line the best I can. I'm very grateful. Um, for that, yeah, uh, you know, it comes with for me, it came with getting older, it came with just a reevaluation of my life and realizing that there were certain things in my life that I, I needed a standard, I needed to, I felt ashamed of certain things I was doing, and I wanted to, you know, live for God because He represents the light, the goodness, and that's what I want to, that's the legacy I want to leave behind is the things of God and his works, blessing people, making people laugh, doing, just loving people, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good testimony too. So we can kind of close out with this, a discussion about Jesus and whatever, however you want to go into it. That's what I'll, I want. I'll to let do. you take the floor. Well, um, the scriptures say that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So that's a good testimony. Um, I have been a Christian for many years. Um, we actually would call in college. <laughs> Rebecca's name, which when she wasn't around, my college friends, we'd call her the Christian. The Christian. We you never, told me we that. We never even called her Rebecca. The like, Christian. The, the Christian was your name. Oh, gosh. I, so I... Uh, giving people names is so much better than their actual name. Yeah, and I earned that one for sure. I So you remember Diane? Diane? Do you remember the Diane years? Oh, vaguely. Remind me. Okay, so I... Um, when I graduated from high school, you know, in the church I was going to, you were kicked out of the youth group and then you're just like i got nothing i got nobody i don't know what to do are you talking about that time in your life when you're 18 you're kicked out of the youth group and you feel lost yes yes that happened to me too like they need to stop doing that because it's ruining people like it's really wrong and like ungodly i'm so glad you addressed that because i remember it was so sad that they said you're too old to come to the youth group now come on and i felt like well, what am I going to do? I went to the singles group a little bit, but there were like 40-year-old divorcees. And yeah. I, it was not my group. It wasn't, I mean, it was okay mm. um, because we're all like believers too, but it wasn't helpful for me. And it was, it was not, that's not great. You shouldn't put like an 18-year-old girl with these like 40-year-old men who are divorced. It wasn't Diane. I remember that. It wasn't Diane so- some kind of a spiritual leader to you that ended up being more of a control cultish yeah it turned into that so it, it slowly i describe it as a python so slowly it wraps around you until you are being choked to death and you don't you didn't realize you it looked until... up to her and she took advantage mm-hmm. of that she did um and i think i spoke against that at the time I was a like, lot of what? people did but i mean by that time the control was so deep and it was it was it's difficult to get out of. I um, I look at different documentaries and stuff now differently when people are in like under someone else's control or in cults. Like I totally understand that. It's very easy to fall into, especially in a very vulnerable time, like when you're 18, you're kicked out of youth group, right? And you're searching, searching, searching. That could be a film right there. Yeah, man. The it- end of youth group. <laughs> What do I do? <laughs> and here, along comes Diane. <laughs> I'm, I can't even believe you brought that up. That's such a tender place in my soul to think about that time. Because I remember trying to go back and they're like, "Yeah, you can't. You're it sucks. Old. You're too old now. Well, you need to do something different for me then. You know? Like, right. you need to find something. Right. Like, you need a ministry to those people and some who... some churches do. Like, my uncle's church does Yeah. That. Which is good. Like, some, some do 
that and some really don't. And then they just leave them to the wolves. And they're like, I don't understand why our church is dying. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Pull up a chair. So you grew up in the faith. Um, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. I mean, I grew up going to church. And in Sunday school, we learned all the Bible stories and stuff. And I'm so grateful for that. Um because I know the difference between Sarah and Rebecca and Rachel and who their husbands were, Isaac. Well, um, the Bible has such great stories. Jacob. Oh, yeah. The Old Testament is just riveting. It's like a Tarantino movie in the Book of Judges. It's so, it is riveting. I can't put it down. It's so good. It gets better as you understand it more. In the beginning, mm. if, if you're not willing to do the cross referencing and do the true Bible study, you don't have the right context. Well, at first, if you read it without like the right context, it's like this story is riveting. It's yeah. it's very interesting. Well, the New Testament, I would say, is much easier to start with. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to just I dive guess. into the Old Testament. I, mean, I you, know I did, and can. I was like, this is awesome. you can. Genesis is just pretty easy to read, but when it gets into Exodus and so forth, it gets a little more difficult. Um, I would say New Testament, start with that. And then jump back into the old. And, but you have to have somebody. Uh, that's why a pastor is good or listening to a preacher is good because they're breaking things down and making it more interesting. So be like the Bereans and search the scriptures. Yeah. Um, I would search. So certain pastors, I'm like, mm, I always, okay, I tell John this. I always go to churches and I squint at people. Like, is how I can describe it. I just squint at them as I watch them preach because I'm like, what is he really saying? What is the heart behind this? What does the scripture actually say? Like, I study very closely when I go to churches, the pastors who are preaching and what they're preaching and et cetera, et cetera. That's important. It is because there's like a lot of fluff out there. There's a lot of BS. There's a lot of stuff that isn't even scriptural that is being preached as gospel. And but Let me give you, no, I'll finish that thought, but I have another perspective to give it you. And like... I like to go where there there is like meat presented and it's very rare to find it does exist but it is very rare one of my friends was telling me man you're not selling me going to church very well I'm like you're right it's not like it's rare to find something that is that is meaty that is solid that is um a hearty satiating type of spiritual food yeah it's difficult and rare so there's a lot of fluff and it's like but when you find it ugh, I've, it's I've looked so at it good. let me uh if you don't mind um i've looked at it from that angle before but i also look at it from a different angle and that is i believe sometimes god may have you in a church and that church may have problems whether it's with the the leadership or the the pastors the people there and you may see flaws um, I think he may have you there for a season to to pray for those people and and to be, you know, kind of someone who will just love them and pray for them anyway. Um, but there are other mm-hmm. times I think he may want you somewhere else. And I think that, that ties mm-hmm. into what you're saying. Yeah, um, for sure. Like go where the Holy Spirit leads you. Because maybe sure. somebody who was a terrible preacher in the beginning later gets better or whatever. Or maybe they're not hearing God in the beginning, but maybe because of your prayers, it clicks and they're and they're more in tune. Mm-hmm. Um, I just try to I try not to judge anyone too hard because I know it's just tough, you know. So I'm not like judging. Oh, this guy's dumb. It's not that. It's like what is actually being preached here. Like what right. is what is the heart behind this? What is like? I mean, you pray about it and you ask God, Hey, is this is this where you want me? You know, sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. Case, yeah, and uh, um, yeah, and he's told me like the church I was going to. He told me to leave a long time ago, and I and I didn't because I was like, I don't know where to go. <laughs> I don't, like I got no place else I've to go. I've been visiting different churches. I, I mm-hmm. went to a church uh, called Hope City recently, mm-hmm. and that is in Walk. I think it's in Wahlberg. You heard of this? Yeah, I've heard of Wahlberg. Oh, it's such a nice church. Okay. Not probably going to be the one I stay at because I'm traveling and then I have of course my home church but are you enjoying your church right now what church right now are you at liberty to say uh like we don't have 
a church ever going to. I was excommunicated after marrying oh, John. <laughs> right. Did you yeah. want to talk about that issue at all or leave that I, out? I don't mind. Um, we, we could touch on it slightly. Yeah. Um, what you tell us about it? Okay. Mixed faith marriages. Yeah. Um, Next on <laughs> Maury Povich. <laughs> Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. <laughs> Mixed faith. So um, we had some leadership changes at our church. I will, let me, okay, you gotta let me tell the same story. I want to shut up. Okay, I had um, a prompting to leave the church I've been a member at for many, 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 many years. And um, I didn't have anywhere else to go. I didn't know where else to go, so I just didn't leave. Um, I had a dream that I was at the church and there was... Um, De- we're decorating or something, and I was walking outside the narthex into the outside. There's a giant cross right when you walk outside, and I was looked up right as I was crossing past the that cross, and there are these fighter jets, and they dropped bombs on the church. And I there were people inside, and there's a lady right behind me. I won't say her name, but she's a great lady. I love her, and but she's right behind me, and I just yelled, "Run!" and I took off, and the church blew up, and I don't know who made it out. I don't know what happened, but I just hoped that they all made it out alive unscathed. And then um, I ended up in the pastor's office and the pastor at the time, door, like just wonderful person. Um, I respect him probably more than any other person on the planet. And um, but I was in his office and I was I saw these maps and these books and this research and this rich, godly material of these godly people throughout history who have written these amazing works of literature just proclaiming the goodness and greatness of God and I was like what do I grab I have a limited amount of time and I've got these two hands and I just was like grab the Bible because all of this stuff can be recreated but the scripture is what's most important grab the Bible and I grabbed it and took off and then I was in like this uh, camp of refugees in the woods somewhere <laughs> and then I woke up. So fast forward, I um, there's a change of pastors at our church years, many years later and I meet John um, who, I don't wanna like put words in his mouth, I'll just say he had a crisis of faith and it was never resolved so he does not currently proclaim to be a Bible believing Christian. Right. So, um, but like, you know, I am an old lady and I was like, I just always knew I would know the one. Mm -hmm. And when I met John, um, I just knew, like we both just knew, we just knew. And, um, so, so you knew that this was the one for you. mm -hmm. And was that surprising to you that he was not a man of faith? Um, didn't you always think that always, you would end up with someone who was a Christian as well? Yeah, I did. Um, but we have, we still have the same values and... What is his faith exactly? Like, he's not a Christian, but what does he believe? Does he believe in possibility and science or what? He is more... Uh, maybe there's a God, maybe there's not. Maybe that... Um, we don't can't talk, be proven kind of thing. Maybe. Yeah. We talk, we don't talk about a whole lot cause I'm, listen, I'm not trying to like push any kind of issues on him. I'm not trying to force him. I don't want to be a nagging wife when it comes right. to that sort of thing. Pray and I trust the Lord. And, um, well, the Bible does say that, you know, if you pray for those, um, God can change them. Yeah. Um, yeah, he can turn the heart of a King. Right. So absolutely. So anyway, I we go to the church and we're like, hey, we want to get married. Will you marry us? We went to one of the pastors and he was like, yeah, sure, it's no problem. Well, he was told that he was not allowed to marry us because um, because John does not proclaim to be a Christian. So they um, they told so he told us that later on and he's like, I'm very sorry, I can't do it. Um, he just wasn't allowed to. And I'm like, listen, that's fine. Like, it's not you, it's them. (laughs) And then they cast you out of the church? So what happened was, what happened was, is they um, lured me into, and I I mean this, they lured me into a meeting. I got called up by one of the elders, and he was like... Like cheese or something? He said, we want to have a meeting with you and talk to you about why... 
this pastor can't marry you guys. And I was like, no, he explained it. It's totally fine. He goes, yeah, but we just, we really want to express to you how much we love you. We want to just, we just want to tell you, they, they made me think that they wanted to tell me their side of the story and just make sure I'm aware that they still love me and all this stuff. So, because those are kind of the words he said, we love you. And we just want to let you know that. So I said to him, Hey, if this is an intervention, like I'm, I just want to let you know, I'm not interested. And he's like, no, 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 no. We just want to let you know, we love you and, and tell you and share, share that with you. And I was like, okay. So I tell John about it. He's like, I don't have a good feeling about this. Um, so I'm at work when I have this conversation and I'm on the fire engine and we're near the airport and I am on top, like loading some hose up on um, the engine and I look up and there are these fighter jets. We never see fighter jets. We never see airplanes fly over us. We're near it, but we're not that they don't fly over us like that. So I see these fighter jets, two fighter jets fly over us, exactly like what was in my dream. I was like, this is weird. So I called John. I told him about the dream like the day before. And I was like, that's crazy. That's crazy. It's just like I saw in my dream. So I go to this meeting the next day and it is an intervention. And I called him out on it. I was like, I told you I did not, I was not interested in intervention. They pretended like they didn't know what the word meant. Mm. I was like, you know, what (laughs) of course you know what intervention means right right um so it was based on a lie how they lured me into this meeting it they lied to me but it's it's not an intervention right but because they're elders and like the actual pastor the it's a different pastor than the one i grew up or i went to for many years um so they basically lied and lured me into this meeting and pretended like they were fine because they're because they're the elders, you know, they're untouchable. So what did they say to you? Um, they told me that I should not marry him um, based on the scripture that says, do not be unevenly yoked with non-believers for what does light have to do with darkness, blah, blah, blah. Mm, yeah. So... But then they told me all about their friends who are not believers. They're like, you know, we've got friends who aren't believers too. And, you know, we, and I was thinking, that's a relationship. That is also a relationship. Um, that's so based on your logic, like you probably shouldn't be friends with them because what does light have to do with darkness? So it was just, it was bananas, this whole thing. And I told him, I was like, I've had about enough. I've heard just about enough. And yeah. then they kept going and then. Finally, the one guy who's like, okay, she's she's had enough. <laughs> and I was like, I'm out. And you've been married how long now? Over a year, just oh, over a year. Over a year. So um, they kept sending me letters to, um, to go to meet with them so that I could hear and receive my accusation of... of um, like this sin or they something They sent like that. you a letter? I have all the... They sent me several letters, and I have all of them still. They sent you a letter to bring you into a tribunal? Like a, yeah, a, you will meet... You will You'll be... You have to come before the session. You, I have to come before the session and hear and receive like the in accusations a, in a against courtroom? me. in a courtroom? Yeah, it was very, what like... What kind of church legally. was this, man? I bet you their <sighs> big sale wasn't that lit. <laughs> Their big sale wasn't lit. Uh, I bet that they, they oh. lacked in other areas, too. <laughs> Your bookstore don't have no Petra and Carmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nut. Hey, no DC Talk. This is, this is all old school stuff DC I'm talking about. Talk. I don't even know who's popular these days in the Christian world. No. So, um, they sent me all these letters, and I never replied because I'm like, I'm not going to go there before all these so you just old left. men... And like yeah. get, get this was told like the Inquisition. It was really weird, and um, like everyone I told about it was I didn't I wasn't like spreading it you know from the mountaintops, but you know I talked to people about it, they're like that's that's weird. It's wrong. What kind of church was this? This is crazy. <sighs> yeah, it's weird. So no, we'll yeah. move back to Diane and come. We'll make a circle about uh, the back fundamentalism. To, back to the fundamentalism. But um, cult. It, Cult of Diane. Yeah. So I was like, no one's going to tell me what to do anymore. You know, that kind of yeah. like, no one's well, going to. What is free will? Yeah. Well, now listen, I, 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 listen, I appreciate, like, for instance, what if your pastor took you aside? Not aside. What if your pastor said, hey, let's have coffee, whatever. And then he just presented the word of God and said, hey, Rebecca, this is the word of God. This is our suggestion to you. 
but we love you and you make your own decision. That would have been totally different. Right. But they, they took it to the next level. Yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. like, this Rebecca is- Smith, you have been found <laughs> guilty <laughs> of a mixed faith marriage. <laughs> Therefore, you'll be sent to the gallows tomorrow <laughs> at the stroke of eight o'clock. <laughs> when the rooster crows, you shall nice. be hung by thy neck until you are dead. <laughs> Sorry, I can't make it. I'll be at work that day. No bake sale for you. (laughs) No, not the bake sale. (laughs) I thought about this. Like, what if if I had met the woman of my dreams? She wasn't saved. Okay. But the thing is, what if she's a Wiccan? Then I'd be like, I don't know. Okay. So, like, like demons floating through my coffee table. Maybe. Um, Listen, this isn't like back to Rebecca Smith. This isn't like uh, something where I'm like, oh. You should, I think it's unwise to just like go around willy nilly just dating anybody you want, like right. who isn't a believer, who right. is like worshiping, you know, in pagan worship. There are specific yeah. guidelines for like guidelines. in the scriptures about like do not yeah. be with the pagans who worship other no gods, etc. Worshippers, right? If they um, worship Baal, Malik. You don't date them. Right. So there are there are strict guidelines concerning that. Now, when they were talking about uh, Second Corinthians, where it says, do not be an evil and yoke together with non-believers, around that, it says nothing about marriage. And it your is, husband's not a Freemason? Right. Okay. He's not. Okay, negative. Good. You're no. good. I'd be like, get out of here with that craziness. <laughs> so what it talks about around that scripture is ministry. Okay. All right, it's not talking about marriage at all. It's really weird to just like in uh, some literature just to be like, this is what we say about ministry, 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 marriage, ministry, 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 ministry. It doesn't make sense. There's no flow to it. It's just the traditions of man make the word of God of no effect, right? Mm, okay. So, um, and with their logic, again, if they have friends who are not believers, then they should like by that logic with that scripture should not be friends with them. Well, then how are we going to reach people with the love of God? We can't. And it, it was just, I searched the scriptures about it. I prayed about it, but I searched the scriptures about it and I don't see anything in there that says that I have sinned um, in that regard. Like, I don't think it is wise to do that, but again, like, yeah. uh, like the, I don't think it's a sin. if you follow the Holy spirit, I mean, he he and I have listen. His parents have prayed and prayed and prayed, and every time I see his dad, he's like, "You're just I love to see you because it just is a reminder that God answers prayers." He had parents who prayed for him to find a godly wife, and God answered their prayers. Like who are these? Are you saying that your husband's family? Yeah, prayed for him mm-hmm. to have a godly wife. Yes, and you are the answer to that prayer. Yeah. And therefore, <laughs> when people question these mixed faith marriages, they don't know that it could be answers to prayer. Yeah, his praying parents mm. and their friends. Like his dad's best friend at the wedding came up to me and he's like, you don't know me, but I know you. And I was like, do you know my parents? It's all a lie, whatever they said. <laughs> <laughs> but he goes, I've prayed for you for, what do you say, like 20 years. And I... Oh, God, the waterworks. Wow. And he and I were both in tears. And it's just... What a perspective. The That, like, Heavenly Father answers the prayers, the effectual and fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And it did. I mean... Can we pray for my Norwegian wife at the end of this session? I will pray <laughs> for you, Eric. I will pray for you, sir. I've been trying to get married ever since <laughs> I was born, man. I came out of the womb like, hey... Ready. I'm ready to get married here. Um, yeah. And I mean, we're both like super old and, and like weren't married ever. Don't have any children, either of us. And here we are married to each other. And I just trust, I just trust God. Like he does answer prayer. And my in-laws tell me that every time I see them and it's a blessing to me. Um, yeah. That's great. Yeah. And the day after my wedding... So whole, let, let me get this clear. Okay. You said your in-laws. So you, do you mean your husband's father prayed for this? Mm-hmm. So your husband's father is a believer. Yeah. And his uh, mom... This makes perfect sense. Yeah. This is great. To Come hear. on, man. Like, can I answer prayers? So, yeah. Um, amen is what I got to say. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. 
And no, I mean, it, I'm just, it warms my heart to hear the story because I didn't realize, you know, we haven't talked in quite a while and I didn't, yeah. I don't, I didn't know the whole spectrum and now I do. It was it's wild. Great. I have a lot of letters from the church. And then the final letter I got was um, the day after my wedding. I'm That was a Sunday. And I was apparently, they announced to the whole church, like, hey, so-and-so is excommunicated for blah, blah, blah. So there, you they were got, in the announcements that you were excommunicated? Yeah. For what con- kind of church is this? I know. I was there when other Sounds people like were excommunicated. Or I was something. like, that's weird. But okay, what, what, are they, what were they? What was their division? Their charge was contumacy and contum. Cont- Contumacy is rebellion against the session. So what it kind, wasn't. <laughs> you, know how, you know how different uh, Christianities have like, hey, some people are Seventh Day Adventists, some people are Baptists. What kind of church was this? I don't want to. Oh, we can't I, say. I don't want to give them a bad name. It was name. a contumer because listen, I've, I've gone to this church for many years, and prior to this new leadership, it was meaty. It was awesome. It was thick and rich with scripture, with conviction of the Holy Spirit, Mm. with heavy laden with these amazing sermons and this learning that I was a, was blessed enough to sit underneath his teaching and absorb. Yes. And I'm grateful for that, but there's new leadership now. And then like the Lord was, was pushing me out. And then like, this was the final straw that just like gave me the left hand of fellowship yeah there's no church there's no man there's no woman that's perfect they're right. not there's no perfect vessels of god correct yeah. we're gonna make mistakes we're just through jesus is the only but way i hope they realize their mistake one day and go oh. maybe i just you know they missed a real opportunity to minister the love yeah. of jesus to my husband they missed a real opportunity to minister to my husband because exactly. we go to church i mean we would we're just faithfully going to church all they had to do is love them into the faith sure like look yeah. Half off on the brownie sale. <laughs> Half off on the brownie sale. Hey, for you. Hey. You know what I thought would be great? Like a great <laughs> short movie, Mafia Church. Hey, get over here. Get out there and praise the Lord. So in the beginning, he uh, has like a mafia guy. Yeah. He's about to be hit. Yeah. And the, and the assassin's like, I was sending you to shoot you. But you know what? I got saved yesterday and I'm moving to Norway. <laughs> so I'm going to let you live. With wild direct. I'm going to let you live. And the guy's like, why? He's like, because of Jesus Christ. And he disappears. And this mafia guy gives his life to Jesus. And he starts a church. Mafia yeah. church. Hey, I tell you what. 50% on the bake sale today, eh? You want a <laughs> coffee? It's on me. <laughs> hey, just remember who you belong to. Not me. You belong to Christ now, right? So make sure you behave accordingly. Nice. Hey, you're going to marry that. somebody uh, out of the faith? Hey, that's good. But, you know, bring them around some. We'll give them uh, some free golf on Sundays, eh? <laughs> Get to know him, and uh, before you know it, he'll be serving. He'll be serving the boss. There you go. The, the one upstairs. Right, the one upstairs. <laughs> okay. I right, hold on. <laughs> While we're speaking about movies, so we got the Mafia Church, and I had mm-hmm. another one before where fire, a fire department led by a woman, mm-hmm. they're fighting jinn because jinn are Islamic. Well, in, in the Quran, they are these, they're not demons, they're their own kind of being, and they're made of fire, but they're probably demons, but yeah, they're made of so fire. Bad. So think about it. fire spirits versus fire department with a woman <laughs> captain. Is she a Christian? Yes. She's okay. like, these here demons, these here jinn, they're only susceptible to a certain temperature of water, just as water freezes that's the temperature. And you have to hose them in the torso. Now, this is only cast out by prayer and fasting. Yes, that's the big boss. At the end, <laughs> like, they find they can only defeat the big boss by having a prayer meeting. Okay. And then the town's musicians come out. and Everybody's rocking and praising the Lord. And okay. then there's a break in the spirit. Boom. Wow. Right as the Freddie Mercury character who got saved. Oh, he got saved. Like, yeah. Ah! He holds the note, and then the fire demon just goes, just goes no. Was <laughs> 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 wild, Eric. You, Rebecca, ladies and gentlemen. Rebecca's recovering. <laughs> These movies are going to be made. It's amazing. Cut Cameron, where are you? That was in one of your movies. That was so fun. No, it could be a great Christian movie. Oh, Get yeah, Cut Cameron aboard. Yeah, he could be your second in command. <laughs> it's 
stuff. Like, I've seen fires. And I've seen rain. And I've seen winds. <laughs> and seas of grain. All right. All right. Let me get back to business. That was our poetry. That was go good. It was beautiful. We, we, we went into like a wormhole there. Let's go back. So I we was... went back to your mixed faith marriage and excommunicating okay. from the ex Tumi church. Well, the, so the day after my wedding was a Sunday is the day they announced my um, excommunication. The only reason I know that is because the next day, Monday, I receive a letter like that says, hey, we're going to excommunicate you yesterday. Like... They said they said they gave me the date, which was the day prior, and the then audacity. I know, and then I was like, "We're going to do this yesterday." So I was like, "Oh, I guess I've been excommunicated." Like, all right, like I got the letter. It's like, I guess the day you don't after. want my tithe. Okay, all right, I know, and that might be part of it because I never put like like we did cash mo- mostly, and it wasn't like you know a check like this is how much this person ties kind of thing. Mm. So maybe that's part of it. If I was a bigger tither, like 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 verbal, you know, right. vocal about it, maybe so it would have been different. You're trying to say if you would have tithed like two grand a month, they'd be like, you know, uh, you can marry whoever you want. Yeah, I don't know. I speculate. That's not right to to judge. Like that's what they would do. That's but, true. But I mean, I don't know. Like maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But. It did happen, and it was wrong. And um, now, I will say, what it forced me to do is search the scriptures yeah. to become a Berean. To well, um, what did Paul say in the scriptures? He, he talked about mixed faith marriages. There's a scripture on it. Yeah, he he's like he talked about if you are if you become a believer and your husband is not a believer, then you need to like stay with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, now we were both like already believer non-believer and came together but he doesn't address that specifically it also oh. says a man and wife asleep in bed and then what i think it says something like that in the scripture it's talking about the rapture how oh, a man and wife will be asleep in bed and then one will be Mm-mm. it says if there's um two women asleep one will be taken the other left oh. if there's two women at the at the granny mill one will be taken one will be oh. left um, well, that's actually from not a, sleeping together necessarily. You know what I was okay. quoting? I was quoting. Uh, I'll look it up online. Isn't that revelation? No, this is actually from a DC Talk song. Hold on. Oh. There's no time to change your mind. Lyrics. Mm. So it says right here. Um, okay, and this is actually not DC Talk. It's they're covering a song from the '60s. It says, uh, "Man and wife." I was just reading it. I wish we'd all been ready is the name of the song. Okay, so it says, The sun is, the sun is come and you've been left behind. A man and wife asleep in bed. She hears a noise and turns her head. He's gone. I wish we'd all been ready. So uh, it's I about so Right, so it's, what it's talking ready. about is a mixed faith marriage. And mm-hmm. then like, you know, maybe, you know, and I'm hoping that your husband will receive the Lord as soon as possible. Thank you, me too. But, you know. If the rapture were to happen like tomorrow and you guys were in bed together and he turned his head, hey, baby, can you pass me the corn flakes or whatever? Why do we have corn flakes in the bed? Because you guys eat corn flakes in bed. <laughs> and then like, you know, he's... In this scenario. And then you're gone. Yeah. That so would be really freaky. Have you ever thought about that? To be like with your husband or wife and then all of a sudden they're gone. Uh, you should have accepted Jesus. I know. Sorry, bye, John. Yeah. I don't know. Now you have to get your head cut off in the tribulation. <laughs> Great. Listen, that. <laughs> Listen, you ever thought about how be, like a guillotine right. would actually be a painless death? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, it's one of the most humane deaths. Torture would be Sucks. kind of hard if they're like, "Hey, yeah. if you don't deny Jesus, we're going to peel off your flesh with one of those potato peelers." That would be like impossible to endure. But if they're just like, hey, we're going to cut your head off, I'd be like, hey, it's no problem. You know, I, I listen to Fox's Book of Martyrs, and that is... You listen to it? Gut-wrenching. Yeah, because I... Uh, audiobook. Audiobook, so I can do things, because, yeah. you know, all the French I, I have a on. copy of it. Yeah. I Matthew had his didn't have brain a copy, bashed so out with a club. Yeah. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. The way it just reads it so matter-of-factly, and it's just oh, the things that they endured. And they're so brave. Those Christians who just, yeah. some of them went burning and didn't scream at all. I was like, oh my 
Because they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If you're not, um, it's a tough way to go. Yeah. I, I don't want to die for Jesus, but I also do want to die for Jesus. All right. Because it's like the best way to go, but at the same time, you don't want to endure. And I think even Jesus wasn't looking forward to being mm-hmm. hammered to a cross. Mm-mm. He was like, if this cup can pass, he's probably like, this is going to hurt, dude. It's going to really suck. Yeah. Because he was you know, 100% man, 100% God. Yeah. And he felt every bit of that cat and nine tails rip his flesh out. Right. So. Um. To, so to circle back to Diane, because people are like, who is this okay, Diane Back character? to Diane was a cult leader type of person so, that had a grip on your belief system and controlling you back in your youth. So, okay. I was 18 to about 27, and it's almost embarrassing to say that. Maybe 25, but it was embarrassing. Anyway, that's a long time <laughs> So <laughs> to be controlled yeah, by somebody. Relatively. But... Um, I but remember. She didn't control what she ate. You still get to have pizza or whatever. I mean, kind of control. She, she, got, like, she controlled just, your diet. Kind of. She like tried to make me eat more. So I'd, she tried to fat me up, and it was somewhat successful. <laughs> so no one else would want me. What? Oh, so no one so took me away had from her. Like a, a, like a feeling for you. Uh, people said that after the fact, and I was like, I don't think so. I think it was different than that, but it was just kind of like to keep her here kind of thing not almost like a Rapunzel kind of situation so what would you like to say about Diane so um it one I am kind of grateful because I was like trapped in this this prison so to speak where I never went out and like got really drunk and I never like got knocked up or anything or like had promiscuous um you know, relations, relations, because I just wasn't allowed to. And, you know, like being kicked out of the uh, youth group, you're at a vulnerable point in your life. And like, you don't know where to go, what to do. And you don't really have the fellowship that you should have. I got to stop you there. I just want to say this to our audience. Hey, if you've got something like that going on in your church or people being kicked out of the youth group, speak up. This mm-hmm. should not happen. There should be a graceful transition into another group mm-hmm. of their age. Yeah. Don't just leave them in the void. Speak up and reach out, for sure. Continue, Rebecca. And if that happened to you, I'm very sorry. Yeah. Um, I, just, I had to say something sucks. because I felt the same pain. Yeah. Continue. Uh, so you were vulnerable in that situation. Yeah. And Diane, uh, we found each other and she um, kind of latched on and I was just like really nice to it. I was like, okay, this lady's, you know, she's got some nice things to say and, you know, whatever. She's... A lot of energy um and then she kind of like started to use that against me like my nature against me um my kindness and stuff so it it slowly progressed into me paying all of her bills and me um all of her bills i went into some debt i um, paying for her stuff and she um had me going to all these like Christian events. How and we old would was Diane? Travel. She would never tell me her age, but I found out at one point um, by someone else that she was like in her sixties, mm. like sixty eight. So that's why you were looking up to her. And I was, way. yeah, she's an older woman, and uh, she was like a spiritual mentor gone bad, you know. And right. uh, she controlled what I wore, who I talked to, what um, she wore. She was all modest. Yeah, yeah. And like makeup, she would always ridicule me if I put makeup on and um she would call my clothes my naked clothes. I'm like, it's a it's a tank top. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't wear I had to wear certain clothes. It was really terrible. Mm. Like it was cultish and but it was very fundamentalist and like you know, like I said, I was, I was like kind of in this prison, but I wasn't allowed to to make all these like really life altering mistakes that I may have made at that very vulnerable point in my life. And I never did because I just wasn't allowed to. So I'm grateful for that part. However, I'm also very grateful to not be in that prison anymore. How were your parents reacting to Diane? Okay. This is a great question. And a lot of people ask, well, my dad was very vocal against Diane. So when you, when you start like talking against someone who is controlling the controlee. The controlee has to distance themselves from you because they have to protect the controller. So that put some distance between my dad and me. And my mom never stopped praying. She never said anything bad about Diane, but she never stopped praying. Um, So like it eventually, (laughs) God answered her prayers. But um, 
I got put someone in my life. I just cried out to the Lord because I got to the point where I was like, I fear Diane more than I fear God. And because God will forgive me, but Diane will punish me. She will make me suffer for anything I do that she deems By wrong. what? Withdrawal of affection or uh, of affirmation? Kind of. It's more like um, telling me continuously how like I've hurt her in graphic detail. Like mm-hmm. very graphic detail. Like she was hit by a truck and she's bleeding everywhere and she's only caring for herself and everyone's around her, but no one's actually helping her. It was... It was a hot mess. It was terrible. It was just like listening to someone tell me how how wretched I am. And all the time. <laughs> like, look, I'm aware. I know. <laughs> like, I know my sins. But, yeah, it was just, it was rough. So, um, she would just do it continuously. Like, she had so many words. Anyway, the Lord put someone in my life and... um he just said, cast out the scorner and strife will cease. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, and I think he prayed for me and, um, I just met him randomly. I went to a Barnes and Noble and I couldn't tell Diana was there because it was near her house. And if I said I was at Barnes and Noble, she would make me come to her house. Barnes and Nobles that ministered to you. Yeah. Amazing. Straight up. So what happened was, is I I was like really upset about, something that happened and I couldn't go to her. I couldn't go to anybody else who was alienated from all my friends and family. And I was just sitting there like, God, I, I'm, I am dirt. I am nothing. Like I am lost. I am in trouble. I am sad. I have no one. And this guy starts walking out of Barnes and Noble, very tall black man who I don't know from Adam. And he goes, he's saying goodbye to people. And he, he says bye to me. And I just nodded at him. He's like, do you speak English? <laughs> because I look so epic. <laughs> and I didn't say words. And I nodded yes, kind of laughing. And he's like, are you okay? And waterworks. I just shake my head no and just start sobbing. And he wraps his arms around me. And literally, I felt Jesus himself wrapping his arms around me. It was the Lord Jesus himself hugging me through this stranger, wow. through this man. Wow. And I will never forget that. Like, I felt Jesus' presence, him himself, hugging me through this man. And um, it didn't matter who he was. If he was was someone who hated God and was hugging me just out of human compassion, it didn't matter. Like, I felt Jesus' presence through him. And um, it turns out he is a Christian. Um... And is one of my dearest friends to this day. He was at my wedding. And um, he prayed for me. And he was like, he shared scriptures with me. And he said, cast out the scorner and strife will cease. And I didn't quite know what that meant. But I know now. (laughs) Like like people who are scornful and making your life miserable. And especially in such an ungodly way. Cast it out. Just cast it out. And the strife that you're feeling will stop. Strife will cease. So it turned out that I ended up not calling her one day. If I call her in the late at night, she's like, oh, I'm the last thing on your list of things to do today. And I would just hear it all night. I was very tired. I was working two jobs to try to like pay for all her stuff. And so I was like, I'll call her tomorrow and I'll just deal with the whatever. So I worked two jobs again. And at the end of the day, I was like, Oh, I didn't call her again. Dang, I forgot. And I don't want to have to hear it again. Very tired. I'm just tired. And so the next day comes around and it's lunchtime. I'm like, Oh, I got to call her. Okay. So I go outside to call her and I'm like, I don't, I didn't do anything wrong. And like, I'm an American. I can do what I want. And it's none of her business anyway. I haven't done anything, but it's none of her business. I'm an adult. So I just had this feeling of empowerment, and I just never called her again. And she hunted me. (laughs) Oh, my God. It was weird. I came out of work with all of my friends that I work with that night, that one fateful night, just like I imagined it would happen. And she just appears out of nowhere and scared me and scared the lady I I was working with. I was giving her a ride home too. She was great. She was like, um, Diane just appeared and she starts saying all these things. 
In the parking lot? Mm -hmm. And she's like, you've disgraced the cross. And then that's when my coworker was like, I've heard just about enough because she don't give a flip. And she's like, you better go call some security because I'm about to kick your beep. (laughs) Oh, my God. She's like, Rebecca's a good girl. And I'm like, yeah, good girl. (laughs) Wow. So, and that is the last time I ever saw her. I was like, I got to give her a ride home. She goes, well, are you going to come back and, and talk to me? And I was like, uh, yeah, you know, I'll think about it. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. No. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Wow. So I just took my coworker home. You and were she- vulnerable. How, how old were you when this started? It's like, I was 18. And, and, you know, any 18-year-old and even older, you can... Your brain is not fully developed yeah. until like 25. These people who so. manipulate are good at it because they've been doing it their whole lives. Very good, yeah. She's Especially good. when you're 68, you're a master manipulator. Yeah. So she was in the... She knew you were vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And think about it. It's not like she was your spiritual teacher only. She was feeding off you financially. Yeah, she was... Uh, she she was basically a con. Yeah. And think of it. She was 68. She was too old to work. She needed money. Mm-hmm. She's like, let me con this young girl. And I'm sure in her mind, she wasn't thinking, oh, I'm a con lady. No. Right. She's like, I'm helping her. Sure. And um, like, I don't believe that she believes she did anything wrong. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but after, you know, I cut ties with her, she still had access to some of my credit cards and was still making purchases. Oh, God. So I had to like cancel my cards and redo all my credit cards. We also have to pray for her and <laughs> yeah, that God may, re- you know, turn her around. But... You yeah. know, she's probably passed by this time. I don't know. Maybe. She, she was 68 I think about that then. sometimes. Right. So yeah. she might be in her She'd 80s still be now. flying around somewhere. I don't know. Maybe. But um, I, like, I think about her. I did pray for her. I don't know if she's alive anymore. You're right about that part. But, right. like, so there have been times when I'm like, I've, I have kind of, like, prayed for her. But, you know, it's... At least she wasn't violent. I don't... Imagine if she was like, Oh, gosh. I've got a bomb strapped to me, baby! It would have been easier. I'm taking you with me! If she, if she were violent, it would have been easier. But, oh, boy. You should have shot I, her? Yeah, I could just leave. Hasta no problem. Vista. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I do pray for her. I have prayed for her. But I just, mostly, I'm just like... I don't ever really want to see her again. If I see her in heaven, it'll be like a different story. Yeah, but if she makes it. Right. I think she will. She, you know, I don't think that she did it. A lot of things maliciously. Some people they can't help what they do because they were. It was done to them, and they've been, you know, either abused as a child mm-hmm. or whatever, and they're insane. You know, I don't ever want to judge the people with mental illness or right evil inside them too harshly because it's like, hey, you don't know their story. You don't know what right. they went through as a child. I do have compassion right. on folks, especially like with mental illness. It's hard. I get it. Like I have experienced that in my family. Um, it's difficult, but um, but I'm really grateful to not be in it anymore. Um, so after that being reintroduced to the world, I understand how kids can like be in a controlling family and then go to college and lose their minds because it's like being pulled really far in one direction with a slingshot. And then when you're, once you're released, you like shoot very far in the opposite direction. Yeah. Once you have all these constraints on you and you don't, mm-hmm. you don't even understand why you're being constrained, um, then you go to college and then suddenly it's like this uh, floodgate of freedom and new ideas that mm-hmm. may be contrary to the word of God and you're so bound up and then you're set free and you just go wild yeah and in that wildness a lot of mistakes can be made the temptation to be pulled deep into worldliness was so palpable as I walked through it the thing is is like I really love God and I didn't want to do that so as I walked through the world without these constraints on me any longer I towed my way into the water so to speak just kind of like tiptoeing my way a little bit more so I could be in this world but not be of it but still like you know function (laughs) like hold a job and you know like um you know live a life, you know, around other people and, 
you know, we have to be in this world. Just don't be of it. Right. <laughs> and like, right. so I went to, started going to a CrossFit gym. It was awesome. And there's people who say a lot of cuss words and yeah. which I wasn't privy to, which now I'm like, I don't know that that's such a sin. Um, well, some people say it's about intent. But I, you know, but I. But what Paul said, he yeah. said, if it's a sin to your brother. Exactly. So I'm respectful don't of people. Hurt their feelings. Mm-hmm. I'm respectful of people who have that conviction, and I like to honor that because that is love. The one, the major lesson I learned from walking with Diane through this world, when I came out of that, I learned that Jesus said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And in this, mm-hmm. you fulfill all the law and the prophets. Yep. There's nothing else. That's it. And if there's confusion on how to love God or how to love your neighbor, he gives you those guidelines. He says, um, God says, if you love me, you'll obey me. He says, um, if your brother tells you, or if someone says, hey, walk a mile with me, go two with him. If he right. says, give me your jacket, give him your shirt too. I mean, he tells you how to love him. He tells you how to love people. Yep. He gives you those instructions, and it's just that easy. So it is an act of love towards your neighbor through not saying cuss words if they have that conviction. Yep. Um, it is um, loving towards others, you know, to honor and respect them, even when they give you, when they call you at three o'clock in the morning about their stub toe. <laughs> it's like you still go on those calls, you still like give them the compassion that, that they was require. a real call. Yes, as they require. Hold on, what did they say? They just, they're like, their toe hurts or something. or that You want the whole fire department to come out because you hurt it's your toe? It's not the whole department. Toe? It's just like one station gets dispatched. Send out fine. one fire woman, my toe is stuck. <laughs> well, all four of us go, but. Um, did, did you go out to it? Of course. Of course. We you, all always go on the call. Well, we wait for EMS to show up. If they want to be transported, they're transported. Um, sometimes people use EMS as a taxi service and just get from one side of the city to the other and they don't actually go to the hospital. Like it happens, it- but like it's, um, people are still made in God's image and we are, you know, the sin- condition of sin is so prevalent. Like we're all just really messed up and we need to like yeah. treat each other like we're made in God's image, love one another, have compassion towards one another, even when we're really screwing up. Yeah, you got to um, give people a break. It's all about love. Sure. And, uh, it's not about our godliness. It's about trusting in Him yeah. and coming to k- turn your eyes upon Jesus because that's where the change happens. And it happens if you take up your cross every day and just have faith, you know. God's mm-hmm. not asking you to change yourself. He's like, just submit to me every day. Love me, and he will change you in time. And I, I think very rarely does God change you overnight. And I think the reason mm-hmm. for that is he's trying to teach you something. Because if he changes you overnight, you're not going to learn nothing. Yeah. It's through the process. It's a seven-year lesson I learned from being with Diane is um, to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And, um, and that is, it's a, such a simple message, but it's difficult because when people are spitting on you and cussing you and beating you, it's hard to love them. It is. Oh yeah. Like that's the struggle. It's a difficult message, but it is simple. And in this, you fulfill all the law and the prophets. But if you get home and you're frustrated with whoever in your life and you open yourself up to the Holy Spirit and you mm-hmm. begin to pray for them, you'll be surprised how you feel about that person by the end of the prayer. Yeah. You know, um, because, you know, you've just seen the dark side of that person. You mm-hmm. Once God allows you to see the good that's in that person through the Holy Spirit, then you're going to look at them differently. Sometimes you know? it's like I get to see the dark side of me. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, I, uh, I am a hot mess as well. And like, how could I possibly judge this other person? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the scriptures do say to judge brothers and sisters in the Lord who are in a sin that may lead to death. Yeah, at the right time. Yeah. Right, but there is wisdom involved in that. Um, but we are not to judge. It also says this. People who are not believers. We don't judge them. No. God is their judge. Right, so judge, yeah. right? But remember what it says, do all things in, in love. In love. Yes. Thank you. So yeah, if true. I'm judging a, a brother or sister, it's not without love. I'll sit them down and say, hey, mm-hmm. I love you. I've noticed this is going on. Let's talk about it. And sure. I just want to listen for right now. Tell me what you, how you feel about it. And often enough, they'll judge themselves and go, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it 
doesn't align with the word. Or like even talk about your own struggles. And then yeah. people are like, oh, I struggle with that too. Thank you for sharing that. And you're right. I do need to seek the Lord. You don't want to judge somebody with a hammer. You want to judge them with a nice warm bowl of spaghetti with some meatballs. Mm-hmm. Say, mmm. Be wise as a serpent. baby. And gentle as a dove. That's yes. That's what scripture says. Wise as serpents, gentle as doves. Mm-hmm. That's a so, good lyric. Yeah, it is. It's good scripture. So when it came to the church um, trying to tell me not to marry my husband, I was like, I don't think the scripture is rightly applied. Right. Even though traditionally a lot of people say it, that's what it means. I don't think it's rightly applied. It doesn't make sense. So um, I looked into it. And also, like, after being through that experience with Diane, I'm like, I will not Mm. be controlled it gave by you man the strength and the reference from the past mm-hmm. to make your decisions in the future that's great yeah i will yeah because like that's how it ties in mm-hmm. mm. yeah and god look or a man looks on the outward appearance and god looks on the heart um which is an, an important scripture with that as well because like they because when they the scriptures that they used to try to convict me about marrying my husband more like he kind of comparing him to a heathen person who sacrifices babies and stuff they use scriptures from the right. old testament my husband's not a warlock he's, he's a farmer right he's a farmer <laughs> a okay. farmer and a fireman i'm marrying a farmer who's just a little bit unsure about what's going on spiritually <laughs> right. this is not some Buddy conducting sacrifices in the mountains of like Ecuador with bones and chickens and voodoo or something. Right. He's. I mean, we have very similar values because he grew mm. up reading scripture. He grew up um, in different churches. He grew up with praying parents. Yeah. So it's he, it's only a matter of time before this guy's saved because he's got too many people praying for him. Yeah. One day he's gonna wake up. I can't stop thinking about Jesus. <laughs> Yes. Good morning, Jesus! I love you, Lord God! I love you so much! <laughs> I'm starting a ministry. We're going to tour the world. We're starting in Cambodia! <laughs> Where it's too hot to breathe and cold. Oh, I would do very well there. We're missionaries! I love to be in hot weather. Oh, well, the food in Cambodia is yeah. delicious. I would like the Cambodian food as well. And they're cute little people there. Oh, it would be great to do like a uh, ministry with children. Um... Vietnam, I heard, is very nice and cheap. Oh, is it? I heard it's a great vacation. Good to know. We went to Aruba for our honeymoon. It was awesome. You went to Aruba? Yeah. So the people there. Were the coins square? There is one coin that is square. It's the uh... only one. Um, yes. But. Aruba. They drive so polite. If you go to make a left turn, everyone stops and you make your left turn. If you are going to cross the street as a pedestrian, everyone stops and you cross Where the street. Where is Aruba? I'm aware it's an island. Is it in the Caribbean? It is, um, but it is not a tropical island. It's a desert island. So it was never used for any sort of like slave labor. It's a because, desert island. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of wind, um, and the trees kind of like blow are kind of like blown towards one direction because of the wind. Mm. Um, there's a lot of cacti. Um, it must have cactus. been a beautiful honeymoon, right? It was awesome. It was very fun. It was mm. gorgeous, stunning. We we Great did beaches. a we went yeah beautiful. Right, I need we went pi- after the podcast. You got to show me pictures. Oh, it was, we did an art tour at mm. one point. It was the most amazing thing. But we went parasailing, and I just started crying because it was so beautiful. And I was like, I'm so grateful for my husband. Oh God, thank you so much. Wow. This beauty I get to see what because yeah. because i married this man and we are on this beautiful honeymoon i'm so grateful i would That's not have been there honeymoon. otherwise yeah wow. i i mean it was amazing and beautiful yeah. and i'm just overwhelmed with gratitude and you know those those men tried to stop me from marrying this man who i i just knew right. i just knew and and his parents prayed and my parents were praying for me as well. It's deep. It's deep. People need to hear this message. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, really. It's like, you know, I mean, you may not be in the wrong like you think you were. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. God works in ways that it's beyond what the conventional thinking. So it's pushed me, and I'm going to change gears a little bit. It's pushed me into um, opening up my home more to other 
women mainly just for a prayer like a prayer group of people who have been kind of like discarded and hurt by the church um and just kind of like almost like if you were the good diane (laughs) yeah you're like the anti-diane i'm not the favored one in the church but like there's other women who i've talked to who i have relationships with who are christians who are like over the bs i'll say right but normally I say the other, um, but like they're just over it because it's not based in love. The things that these people mm. are doing, yeah. and it's like this: the they people want, need more home groups. They yeah, they because, do. Right. My mother does a home group, and it's blessed a lot of women. Yeah, and the, people need that because let me tell you, when you go to church, there's not a lot of time for real intimacy. fellowship, right? And intimate fellowship, right? right? Four or five people at a table breaking bread together, not. Because the more people you have, the less intimacy there is. We have small... a good group, four or five, yeah. six, whatever. We had small groups at the church I was going to, but like when I looked back, I thought, I have not been in more than five people's homes as long as I've been a member here, which is like well over 15 years. Yeah. Like how dare they try to come into my life when they've never been in my life before? They have no idea right. who I am. Right. So they, they didn't you know, even know you on an intimate level and yet they're trying to make intimate decisions for your life. Right. Mm. Exactly. And it's yeah. wrong. So I... What's my favorite color? <laughs> then therefore you shall not say a word. <laughs> you don't know me, no. Silence! <laughs> Silence! <laughs> you think you know my love life? <laughs> you know nothing! You've never been to my domicile. Domicile. <laughs> So I've invited people to my domicile. (laughs) (laughs) And we've met, we've had a group of women in here. We've met once already and we'll meet again um, this month. And yeah, and I'm really looking forward to our, our next meetings. And I'm looking forward to starting a Bible study as well. In addition to this group of prayer of women who, who are like solid in the Lord and going to pray. And then a Bible study to people who are like seeking Know the Lord, but seeking. Um, the scriptures say to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, I need to do that. So <laughs> I tremble sometimes. Like, Lord, I'm yes. sorry. Help me with this sin. Truly. And, um, like, God is for real. Like, he's serious. He doesn't play. He doesn't mess around. Like, sin is a serious thing. And I want to yeah. repent. Um, so, like, I just want to, like, just preach the gospel to people um, in a loving way, in a comfortable and safe way, in my home, I want to love them into the kingdom, into repentance. I want to, um, and it would bless me as well. I just, that is what I want. And I'm kind of grateful that they kicked me out so that it's forced me to do this. Because like I said, I felt the, the Lord prompting me to leave my church for, for a while. I didn't know where to go. Right. He used this. But yeah, he is used because everything that the enemy means for evil, God will use for the good of those who love him and are called according yeah. to his purposes. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And I will say too, you were there at my wedding and you heard my vows when I talked about like, I didn't. Thank have... you for respecting my purity. <laughs> yes, that. And, um, and he waited with me and I was so grateful. Amen. Um, because there are other Christians. I've waited a thousand wouldn't. years for that. You know, it's more but, important to me just to be with a woman of God who really loves me than the physical aspect. Like, that's cool, mm-hmm. but I long so much more just for that love. Yeah. That pure love that she, I know she really loves me. I really love her. And then it's yeah. great. I enjoy having mm-hmm. conversations with her. I enjoy everything, you know. I hope so that for you. It's going to happen probably yeah. in the next couple of months. Don't be surprised if it's Wild Eric's wife's traveling podcast. <laughs> a lot of people... <laughs> that's funny. A lot of people were like, oh, you'll be next. Oh, just in the next few months. I predict in the next year you'll be married. So mm. like many years later. Yeah. I mean, like when I gave up on everything, I was like, I'll just be a cat lady because I love cats. <laughs> John's not having that. That's he funny. is not having that. Um, well, I'm pretty sure it'll happen for me like soon, but you know, it's not, I'm not really in a super hurry. The Lord's timing. I think. Well, first of all, American women are not as every culture you go to. I imagine the women are different. 
because yeah. there's a lot of cultural cultural like did you know in Norway the women there uh, this is what I heard online they have more of a sense of uh, equality there mm-hmm. and and they want to toe the line just as much as their man is and that's true over here to a degree but mm-hmm. I'm just saying more so there is what I hear um, huh. but I'll let you know how that is yeah let me hear how I guess who knows but I'm just I'm just putting my faith in God that it'll happen at the right time so. do it but um, I was saying about my vows too is the um, the you know I said do you what did I say? <laughs> I have them written down. I'm trying to remember them. Something about like, you know, I didn't follow my heart because the heart is, I fought against following my heart is what I said. I fought against following my heart because the heart is is deceitful and desperately wicked and who can know it? Mostly. Um, that's what scriptures. It I, is I know, 100%. But I do think scriptures are just a lot of times speaking like in general. And then at times they're like, you know, you got to take certain things. Like, for instance, when Jesus is like, cut off your hand. I don't think he literally means cut off your hand. But I do, I do think he means literally. You're right. He doesn't mean literally cut off your hand. But he does mean literally. Taking a butcher knife. All right. Jesus your, said it. That your heart is wicked and desperately. Right. Is deceitful and desperately wicked. And who can know it? So yeah. that's why I fought against fi- following my heart. It is tempting to follow right. your heart. Um, because that will lead you down a path of death and destruction for sure. Because we are sinful. We are in the sinful nature. In the sinful world. Um, I'm just saying I believe in the duality of the scriptures. Like, what, something may say something, but I don't mean I don't think it applies to every situation. Just like back to the unequally yoke thing. So follow the Lord. Um, well, the- yes. Okay, buddy, we are back. <laughs> it's a wild Eric's traveling podcast that has been. Our batteries keep dying, but uh, we're going to start plugging into the wall after this. Anyway, back to what we were saying. What were we saying, Rebecca Smith? We're debating about the um, heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Which right. is a scripture. And but I don't, I don't 100% agree with that, that scripture. I think it, it applies to most of the time. But if a heart is yielded to the Holy Spirit and it's filled with the Holy Spirit, then it's not like okay. a sweet old lady who's giving yeah. it. Candy is like evil. Right. So let me finish. So if you're following the Holy Spirit, if you're following the leading of the Lord, Mm. then yes, like that, like you should follow the Holy Spirit. So you're right. Like if you are yielded to the Holy Spirit, if you're walking in accordance to his word, if you are, um, if you are, yeah, submitted to God, then like you can take your steps with confidence. Um, but otherwise, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And that's why, and it is a struggle to fight Especially against it. Especially if you smoke cigarettes. <laughs> or other sins. So it is, it is difficult because the pull towards sin, the pull towards um, walking in this world according to the world rather than according to the light of the Holy Spirit um, is... It's very strong. So in my vows, I said, I said I fought against um, following my heart because it is deceitful and desperately wicked, and who can know it? And I know that about myself. Mm-hmm. I know that I am a sinner, desperately wicked. Yeah, you can't trust yourself. I can't. But um, but I want to follow the Lord because I truly love God. Like when I came out of that whole situation with Diane, I could have very easily. Um, fallen into the world like the pool was so hard but I truly love God and I didn't want to so I had to fight against that and I didn't have the fellowship I once had I didn't have the constraints I once had so it was it was every day I had to be hyper aware of what I was doing where I was going how Mm, I was presenting myself etc etc until I like acclimated myself essentially to the temperature like if you were going into a pool temperature of the pool the temperature of the world and just so I could live in this world but not be of it. Right. Um which is daily a thing. Like to to repent, to struggle with, to wrestle with, to pick up your cross daily and follow him. It's a thing. And there are days when I haven't picked up my cross. But I'm I mean I'm aware of that scripture and I just 
am feeling more every day, like pick up your cross and follow him. Pick up your cross and follow him. It's hard to do. Yeah, it's time management. Yeah, well, that too. Can yeah, be. because, you know. Can be. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. One thing you got to do, you know, like, well, I like to, and you know this because you work out, like the when I work out mm-hmm. on the days I have off or whatever, um, I like to do it first because if you don't do it first, you're likely not going to work out. Um, whatever works for you, but time management, you got to actually say, okay, I'm going to read the Bible this time. I'm going to pray at this time. Mm -hmm. And then of course, pray throughout the day. Um, and it makes a huge difference. Every time I get the word in me, suddenly I'll find somewhere in life I can directly apply it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I used to use my ungodliness as an excuse not to do the work of God. I'm like, I'm not worthy. And I found that Peter says in the scripture we perform this miracle not because of our godliness. It's because of the, our faith in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And it's by the following that we the change happens. Um, it's like Peter, when he first started following the Lord, after three years of following the Lord, he still didn't have the strength to not deny him. He still denied him three times. He wasn't a perfect guy. He still sinned. But the difference is, he would yield himself to God and he would trust God and he would obey God to the best of his ability and then trust God to do the rest. Mm-hmm. He submitted. So even though you're submitted to God, doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but it's not through your godliness God's going to work. I was watching The Chosen recently. You know the show The Chosen. I love The Chosen. And John and I watch it together. It's terrific. It's awesome. And Cheers. in The Chosen, he, one of the disciples says, I prayed for someone that received deliverance from a the sin that I have trouble with myself. Interesting. You know, and I haven't watched the third season yet. The, there's a preacher named Afshin Javid. He used to be a terrorist. And he said he prayed for one man and immediately his eyes were healed. He was blind. And then he prayed for another blind guy and he wasn't healed. He said, God, you know, why didn't you heal the second guy? He said, well, you know, you have to trust that I have a bigger plan. Um, but your job is to just trust and obey me. And that really gives me a lot of relief in my Christian walk. Mm-hmm. If I just put all my trust and all my faith in him, I know that, as the scripture says, he that began a good work in you will be faithful to complete the work. So I don't even worry about it anymore. I, you know, There are times I say, okay, Lord, I need extra help in this area of my life. But I'm not worried anymore because I, God knows my heart. It's like Jesus talking to Peter on the shoreline after he resurrected. He said, Peter, do you love me? Mm. He's like, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And then he said, feed my sheep, you know, take mm. care of my lambs. Trace. And so that's, I think that's more important than worrying about your sin. So people are like, oh, my sin, my sin. Hey, forget about your sin and follow Jesus and, by, and do what he asked you to do. And that's in the chosen room where you send out the 12. Yeah. That's been the message to me lately. Hey, no, don't worry about your sin. Go out there and start doing the work of the Lord and maybe you won't have time to sin anymore. You know? Hmm. So the more time you spend doing the work of the Lord, the less time you have to sin. The more time you spend chasing the light, the less of the darkness is there. You know? Yeah. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Yeah, amen. And the more... Yeah, the the less time you have to focus on yourself and your own stuff. Right. Yeah. It's like, I feel more and more it's just a waste of time me focusing on any of the things that I, that I have gone through and whatever kind of trauma, like, which is a blessing from the Lord because there are people who have trauma who really need to, like, have, like, yeah. have some healing. Definitely. But, um... But more for me, it's like, it's a waste of time to focus on my own issues I'm dealing with. I like, I need to, to share the gospel that Jesus is the way to God, that he is the way to have a right relationship with the Lord God Almighty. He's the only way, the only truth. and the You only know what way. I've really been doing lately, and this has been working for me, is instead of going up to people and saying... Do you know Jesus? Have you accepted Jesus? You're going to hell, any of that stuff. And of course, I've never said to anybody they're going to hell. <laughs> I just simply say this. Hey, can I pray for you? Yeah. And if they say no, then you just pray for them later. 
But if they mm-hmm. say yes and you pray for them, they're going to want to know who you're praying to. Mm-hmm. You say, oh, I'm praying to Jesus. Yeah, I mean, if you love, if you approach them with love, yep, it's that is palpable and it is alluring. Because even if they don't believe, right, they're like, this person's trying to do something loving towards me. Yeah, you know, um, you know, you know it when you see it and when you feel it. Like you know what it is. That's like when I go to churches, I always squint my eyes because I'm like, is this a from a place of love. Um, yeah, but then, like, that's the thing, though. Like, either way, every situation is a call to prayer. Yeah. Every situation. If it's Thanksgiving, thank you for this person, Lord God. If mm-hmm. a person's up there on the pulpit or in the church or wherever, it could be a guy making you a sandwich at Subway that just keeps cursing and saying weird stuff, and or, or maybe he just looks like he's a... Whatever. Every situation is a call, is a call to prayer because yeah. everybody needs prayer. Yeah doesn't matter if you're a successful preacher or you're somebody in the street stabbing people everybody yeah. needs prayer um and yeah that's why it says pray without ceasing so yeah amen just got to keep on doing it you know and that's part of the you know god's really been speaking to me it's like now's the time for outreach you know and you don't have to outreach in some awkward way just go right. out there be you be wild eric <laughs> yes talk to people and <laughs> then at it. the end of the interview yeah, you want to pray? They're like, no. <laughs> I, I'll pray for you later when you're not around, and it'll be just as good. Sure, God still You'll be surprised what happens. Yeah, that's my Indian head bobbing to. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Would well, you want to go ahead and close with a word of prayer? You think we're we're? Uh, is there anything else you want to say, or anything else in your spirit? Because I just really want those pancakes and eggs you were talking about. <laughs> We have feed my sheep, Rebecca. I, I know, literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, no, like, no, that's it. Just like love God and love one another. And if there's confusion on how to do that, the scriptures tell you exactly how to do it. Yeah, and you know, remember the Bible says the Holy Spirit will guide you in all truth. So if you come to Him and just shut up, because the Bible says, "Be still and know He's God." Mm-hmm. It's more important than your words. It's just to be still and know he's God. And then he will make great things happen in your life if you just believe. Oh, what I always tell people too is, like he says, um, he says, test me and see, like, like, I always tell people, like, ask him. Ask him if he is who he says he is. Yeah. Because he says to do that. And, yeah. like, just say, who are you? Or are you who you say you are? Show me who you are. And mm. he will. He'll, he's faithful to do that. He, he says that in his in his words. So if you have any kind of question, question mark about it, ask him. Truly. Like, just ask him. And um, he says, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you diligently seek me, you'll find me. Yeah. So... Like, be legit and ask him, are you who you say you are? Show me who you are. And he's faithful. He is. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. It's been great. Yeah. You Thanks know, for well, listening to my we stories. Will, listen, when I come back, I'm trying to come back to the United States in December. When I come back, maybe we'll do like a follow-up podcast. You know? It'll be fun. be great. Maybe have John on. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It'd be great to have him here. Mm-hmm. So listen, let's close out with a word of prayer. Sure. Anybody who made it to the end of the podcast gets the blessings. (laughs) You want to be blessed? You better make it to the end of the podcast. That's how you get the benediction. No. (laughs) It's it's like Darth Vader at the end of the movie. No. So Being cool. vanquished by the, they bless the, the fire hose is blessed by a Catholic priest. It becomes holy water. Does it? And then they shoot the gin. He's like, no! no! <laughs> we should at least make a skit out of it. I yeah. I, I wish, we were, I, I could still go back and, there's some footage of that movie we shot together. That's that awesome. was so funny. When you're eating the cupcake. Yeah. He's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, our audience is like, what? I shot a video, a movie with Eric once. Psycho Christians. It, it was it was fun. It was interesting. It's a great name for a band, Psycho, Psycho Christ- Christians. Psycho Christians. Band name. That should be our band name. Oh my gosh, it's our band name. All right, it's our cool. band name. Listen, no one else is allowed in our mm, band. Yeah, we claimed it. Do you have a guitar here? I wish I did. Okay, I don't. I have a piano maybe? No, I got right. spoons, two spoons. We can click clack together. Okay, well, next time we get together... Music. 
we're going to start our band called yeah. Psycho Christians. <laughs> or should... <laughs> no, that's, that's it. It'd be, I'm serious. We'll put out some tracks on the podcast. People will, people will download it. It'll be great. I love that. And it's Christian lyrics, so but to much. the max. Like, <laughs> like you're saying Christian things. But dancing they don't... with the dinosaur. No, we're not dancing with the dinosaur. <laughs> Stephen Curtis Chapman, if you ever hear this... That was a terrible song. Oh, yeah. It was not good. No, no. We're going to write Christian lyrics to the extreme. Yeah. Like, we're going to save you if it kills you. <laughs> Except Jesus. Or else. Or no. die. That's like the no. Spanish Inquisition. No, should, no, no, no. Right. I mean, it's going to be with a, uh, a, like a ha-ha. A ha-ha. A ha-ha. A ha-ha psycho Christian. <laughs> That's the refrain. It, uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's uh-huh. all goof. Uh-huh. Me and Rebecca have always been the goofs and, and, and just silly, and that's why we love each other. So yeah. we're going to pray out of this. Mm-hmm. So I'll let you start. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've made. We thank you that your mercies are made new every morning. We thank you that we have this beautiful fellowship, and we thank you that we're two or three are gathered together in your name, that you are in the midst. We thank you that your presence is here with us. God, we ask that you would bless us um, and our time together um, and the people listening. I pray that you would do your thing, Lord, that um, I think that your word is true and that when people call to you that you are there, that you answer prayers. Um, I pray that you would bless the feet that bring the gospel of good news. So as Eric travels, bless his feet. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the gospel of good news. Um, And be a lamp to his path and a light unto his feet that he can take every step with confidence. Um, I pray for great victory and that people are saved and the kingdom of heaven is expanded by his ministry and testimony because that is how we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony in jesus name we give you praise and thanks for your blood and salvation in jesus name lord god thank you thank you for everything lord god i just pray now for rebecca as you bless her today and bless her husband lord and i pray for the listeners lord god that you would Use this podcast to bless their lives and to empower them and to let them embrace their destinies in you, Lord. So, Lord, your word says that no one can come to Jesus unless the Father draws them. So I pray through the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, that you would draw those that do not know you. Lord, draw Rebecca's husband, draw all the husbands and wives out there that may be in a mixed faith marriage. And Lord, I pray that you would bless this podcast and my travels to Norway, England, and Japan, and beyond. And Lord, I just submit myself to you and let those listening submit themselves to you to be still and know that you are God And let them trust you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.